All right, should be on air. Just wait for the stream to actually catch up with the fucking YouTube channel. We should be good to go. Or is it still dead on me? Let's find out. Oh, still says starting soon. Please stand by. Fucking delays. Just give it a moment. Hopefully it actually works. Unless I gave everybody the wrong link, which would be funny as shit. Well, just in case you read this, for questions, yeah, I'm reading the chat for questions. That and Twitter, too. Either of them's fine. Doesn't matter to me. Uh-oh. It's Is it going on or not? Oh, shit. Okay, it's live. Yeah, the way this Google Hangout shit works is uh, confusing as all hell because it doesn't really show me the link when I go to the Google Hangout or whatever it is. And it doesn't actually let me know. It says it's on air, but it doesn't say the exact moment that it's broadcasting live. So there's always a fucking delay. All right, let's see what the sound is like. All right, sound quality is not horrible shit. So yeah, I figured I'd do a uh, a stream. I had to push the video back till Saturday. There's a lot of shit going on. And I had people dropping me information too. So it gives me a little bit of time to look into it. But uh, this is not uh, some super serious stream. So ask whatever you want. Whatever you guys want to talk about. It doesn't really matter to me. I was going to do this in three hours, but a bunch of Brit bongs were saying that uh, it, it's too late for them. So if you could fuck it. Am I a big guy for you, uh, Oranor? For you, I am. Are you the guy in your pick? No, I'm not the guy with the wig. That's um, just a random Google image search. From what somebody tells me, it's a costume company. So I'm guessing that means that, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, there's a whole outfit out there. Everything you see, it's an, it's an entire fucking outfit. Hey, Jim, what do you think of the death of 4chan? That uh, feels, feels uh, shitty, man. I like 4chan. <clears throat> I just don't like the way... Uh, I don't like the way it's going. I don't like Moot's uh, reaction to the Gamergate thing or his crackdown in regards to a few other things. It feels like he kind of did a 180 on what his stated stance was. Because when Sherrod ended up, what, shutting down uh, Encyclopedia Dramatica to go do whatever fucking website it was, Cheeseburgers or whatever the hell it is, um, she had she'd done some presentation and Moot was in the audience and he asked her if she felt it was right to basically, I can't remember how he phrased it, but it wasn't right to fuck over your user base. So it, again, it's just weird. I've, I've seen Moot give speeches and I've heard him talk before and his recent actions don't really line up with that very well. What's my favorite game? Everybody fucking asks that. And every time I give a different answer, I'm not consistent. There are too many good games. I, I couldn't tell you what... Uh, what the perfect game is. What my favorite game is. What's my opinion of 8chan? I don't know. I like what I see so far. I mean, I've gone to the V board, the poll board, and the GG board. It seems pretty good. Random board seems to get a lot of traffic, too. Did I read the EA statement? Are you talking about the one where they said that... Uh, was that the fucking statement EA released saying we shouldn't rape people? Is that the EA statement you're talking about? Because that's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard of. I need a video game company to tell me not to go rape people. That's brilliant, EA. That's another bold step forward in video games. Congratulations. Uh, your thoughts on the whole Xseed boycotting shit from the other day? I'm going to guess you were the pissed off person um, asking me on Twitter why I retweeted that. Uh, like I said in the past stream, I, you know, the whole Gamergate thing, just a bunch of different people doing different things. Uh, you know, if you want to take part in it, go ahead. If you don't, don't. Uh, I didn't actually see the whole boycott Xseed thing. I actually missed that. I just thought it was male advertisers, you know, tell them what's going on, try to get them to, you know, pull ads from these different sites. Uh, but, you know, aside from that, I don't really have an opinion. I like Xseed, so I have nothing against them. Washington Post reported that Gamergate. Oh, somebody's actually using Steam to ask a question. That's a new one. Let's see. 
All right, Morality124. Stream question, uh, why do you, what? Why do you think you haven't ended up on Atheism Plus Blockbot yet? Uh, well, I'm not an atheist, so it's probably, uh, don't they just block atheists on the, the block list for Atheism Plus? And besides, I've never had any encounters with any of those people. <clears throat> I'd imagine that, what, Thunderfoot and Amazing Atheist and Justicar and all those guys would probably be on the block list, but they don't know who the fuck I am, so that's probably why I'm not on it. Uh, hello, Aristocrat. Hello, Alex Vance. <laughs> nice nice name. Hi, Lopeng. Uh, King of Pole confirmed child-hating cyber-raped shitlord. <laughs> when did he get that new title? Jim confirmed for Weeb. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. hey, you know, I, I like uh, I like some anime. I'm not gonna lie. There's some there's some anime series that I like. Uh, fuck you, Jim. I went to get food and missed the beginning. You didn't miss much. My streams are a fucking disaster every time I do them. So it's not like it's not like you're missing anything. Uh, all right. They block misogynist. Monday and Matt is on it, as is Sargon. Well, I guess that means I'm not a misogynist. So thank you, Atheism Plus, for agreeing that I am not a misogynist. <laughs> it's fucking great. That's that's a great endorsement from social justice warriors. It's fantastic. I A, are you a deist? Uh, no, I'm not. Who are you going to main in Smash? I don't have a Wii U, so I'm not going to main anybody. But I did buy a DS recently. Uh, or no, I'm sorry, fuck. A 3DS. All these fucking names are so similar. I still mix up PSP and Vita anyway, so what the fuck does it matter? I bought a uh, Nintendo 3DS XL. I had a gift card to a electronics store, and it was on sale anyway, so I ended up paying like 40 bucks and got it with... Uh, what is that fucking RPG? Mario and Luigi Dream, whatever the fuck it is. And then I bought a bunch of other games and shit. I've been having a lot of fun with it, though. What the fuck did I even pick up? Legend of Zelda, Link Between Worlds, Pokemon X, uh, Bravely Default, Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney. And then, like, I, I got a bunch of shit used, too. Uh, Super Street Fighter 4 3DS Edition, which is probably a mistake, because I'm shit at fighting games, but whatever. Uh-oh. And the sound cut out here. Nope, it didn't. All right. Uh, then what the fuck are you, nigga? Uh, are you talking about our, our when you were asking about the DS thing? I said I'm an atheist. It just means I don't have any fucking clue, and I don't want any part of it. I got other shit I'm more interested in. But I really do enjoy watching um, theists and atheists fling shit at each other. Listen, I find that entertaining is all hell and that that's never going to change like five or six years ago you saw a lot of you know youtube atheists really just dropping the fucking hammer on creationists on youtube and that was funny to watch because people like venom fang x and those kind of guys it just watching them lose their shit was really entertaining it kind of it, it's flipped on its head now where atheists are the ones getting mocked constantly with all the fedora jokes and banana jokes you know it, it's cyclical it'll it'll swing back around again Vita has no games? Why, I wouldn't know. I don't own a Vita. I learned my lesson with the PSP. I bought that fucking thing and played Luminous, and that was about it. Oh, and Final Fantasy Crisis Core, but my friend's girlfriend dropped my fucking PSP on the ground and shattered it, and so after that, I, I never was able to complete the game. Hello, shitlord. Hello, Brad Childless. Oh, let's see what we got here. Opinions on Tim Schafer. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions on Tim Schafer. I like that recent Steam post he put up, though. Hey, guys, sorry we fucked you over a second time. Couldn't finish the game, but thanks for the money, you stupid fuckers. How many, how many times do you think he can pull that off? How many times do you think people are going to give him money for not completing a product before they decide, you know what, Bobby Kotick probably was right. Maybe, maybe we've been wrong about Bobby Kotick. Maybe we've been looking at it this, you know, this entire thing the wrong way. Bobby's a businessman, all right? That's what he knows. He runs businesses. He knows how to make a profit. And I'm not a huge fan of Call of Duty and a lot of the shit Activision does, but fuck me, man. At least when you go to buy a Call of Duty game, you, you get a Call of Duty game. You don't get a third of a Call of Duty game with a message at the end begging for Kickstarter money. Like, Bobby doesn't do that to you. But Tim, on the other hand, loves to do that to you. 
Oh, let's see. What do we got here? Uh, IA, what do you think of the IGF's old archives on the Wayback Machine getting deleted? Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Listen, when Gamergate started picking up steam, there was that screen cap of Zoe talking to somebody about contacting the Wayback, or the Internet Archives, essentially, and asking to get information removed. So it's not surprising. And holy shit, I'm going to keep hearing these fucking pop-ups. Sorry, Morality, but I, I and everybody else, but... Oh, all right, for the stream, would you care for some Udon, Jim Kuhn? <laughs> nice, nice question. A stream question. How do you feel about Moot and GG threads being censored now? Like I said, I think it sucks, but, you know, there's other places to go. You can go to the Escapist if you want to go. You can go to 8chan if you want to go there. I mean, fuck, you can go to something awful and talk about Gamergate. How insane is that? And you know what? I'll say it again. I think Lotex, you know, probably put it best. Who? I mean, his whole thing was, who fucking cares? It's just, you know, to him, it's just shit to laugh at. You can have people flinging shit. Why does it matter one way or the other? So why would you delete it? You know, that, that should have been the approach Moot took. I don't know why he couldn't just put up a fucking sticky or let people go to a specific board to discuss it, but he needs that he needs that uh, venture capitalist money and to impress his, you know, pals at Google. Uh, what's your opinion on the mail list? Are you talking about the uh, Game Journals Pro thing? I, I think Breitbart and I think uh, Milo fucking knocked it out of the park with uh, their articles talking about it. I get that I've heard people, you know, say, oh, it's not that uncommon. People who work in, you know, this industry will talk to one another or, you know, sites will have internal mailing lists. But this wasn't a website's internal mailing list. <clears throat> and these weren't colleagues just shit, you know, shitting it up with each other. These were, this was essentially everybody together on a secret thing talking about this for what, four years? Fuck that. I think it's bad. I think it looks. I think it makes them look bad. Is what I think. Uh, oh, now it's going quick here. Moot does it for free and hot pockets. Yeah, he does it. For, actually, no. Moot doesn't do it for free. He so far he's done it for about what is it? Nine hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars would be the total cost or the total amount in venture capital that he's gotten. So no, he's not doing it for free. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Do I have a bucket list? No, I don't. Uh, I hey, have you ever posted, visited my posting career? Uh, nope, I don't know what that is. It's going too fast. Not anymore. Bitter black. Slow down a bit. Will you hug me, I a? I don't think that's fucking possible on the internet. Uh, I, I don't. Oh yeah, that's not gonna happen. I'm. I'm gonna guess. What are your thoughts on Emma Watson's UN speech? Why the fuck would I listen to Emma Watson give a speech in front of the UN? I don't care what Emma Watson thinks outside of the UN, let alone in front of it or inside of it. Uh, none of her opinions, really. It's not like I, I don't think, holy shit, Emma Watson said something. I need to really go pay attention to this. I need to listen and believe. So I don't know what she said exactly. I know the whole uh, marketing shit that was going on with the, uh, you know, trying to shift blame onto 4chan. I get that. I understand the background story to that, but I have no idea exactly what she said, and I don't really care. Uh, Jim, you bastard, check Twitter. All right. Well, let's check Twitter. From P... <laughs> From Penis Weenus, all right, Dead Wing Duck. Uh, have you seen the image that reveals Depression Quest's extreme sim uh, similarities to Silver Strings Label Maker? Hey, fuck, that sounds familiar. Didn't um, Arini, didn't he post a video like yesterday? I didn't get a chance to watch it. I saw it pop up and a couple people retweet it. Where he's like, let's play, was it Silver Strings Label Maker? Maybe that's what that was about. I should have fucking, I should have taken a look. Then I'd have more idea what you're talking about. But I didn't get a chance to. Are you going to go more, uh, what is this? Are you going to go more about 4chan, video, and internet stuff, or do you plan on talking about politics and social issues? Are you talking about for the YouTube channel? Uh, it, it's just what you see up there is what it usually is. Talking about, you know, like the Tumblrisms and Hugbox stuff. I mean, that's all about, at its core, that's all about social justice warriors. Really hypersensitive people on the internet that uh, get upset about stupid, trivial shit and usually profiteer and are the worst kind of people to have to associate with. Uh, see NeoGAF for a fucking example of that. 
you're probably getting spammed right now, but once again, here's the EA link. Okay, I'll take a look at that in a second. Thank you. Uh, gives me a better idea of exactly what they said. Uh, you may be an asshole, but you're my kind of asshole. Why bother with the GP? We don't fucking need them. You're talking about GP Gaming Press? You know, I get it. I, I get it. People are like, they're irrelevant. They're not needed. But I, I, again, well, look at EA with their dumb statement. What do you think's going on? I mean, it's not just them fucking with us, the consumer. They have the power to fuck with the companies making games. You really think EA would be releasing statements like that? Do you think Bioware would behave in the way it does? If it wasn't getting information saying that this is how gamers are, or this is what's you know they respond to, so you know it swings both ways. The gaming press needs to get their shit sorted out, and people like Kuchera need to be gone. It doesn't even look like his colleagues particularly like him, and I sure as shit know we don't like him. I don't understand how he's so entrenched. Um, the interesting thing about Kuchera was he worked at Ars Technica, right? And I believe he worked there. And the mailing list, you know, or I'm sorry, the Game Journals Pro Group started on Ars Technica. So, I, I don't know. It feels like there's more to that. It feels like there's a lot more going on to that particular thing. Uh, but people haven't had a chance to really dig through it all. Let's go back to the stream chat here, see what people have to say. Uh, you literally can search on YouTube and see new games for yourself. Yes, you can. But I can't search on YouTube to, you know, go and... Uh, talk to the developers themselves. I can't, you know, talk to Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo themselves through YouTube. Well, I, maybe Nintendo Direct is trying to bridge that gap. I, you know, that's one interesting thing about Nintendo is they kind of, I guess, sidestep the whole gaming press thing before anybody really was bitching about it being the issue that it is, uh, you know, right now at the moment. They're like, fuck it. We, we don't need to do conventions. Fuck it. We don't need to really deal with the press. We'll just do Nintendo Directs. It's pretty... It's a pretty good idea, really. Uh, 2,000 viewers, congrats. I can't really tell because every time I do one of these fucking things, it always stalls up on a number. So I really don't I don't know what who's in here or how many or, you know, I, I can't actually see it myself. Say it to my face, Jim. All right, awful, Alice. I'll say it to your face. But seriously, though, the other can video. Yes, that will be the next. Listen, the next Tumblrisms is either going to be rape culture or um, other kins. I'd like to do other kins personally because that's just that's a whole level of insanity onto itself. Oh, let's see what do we got here. Have I ever run into SJWs in real life? Yes, to a degree. Yes, I have. Um, but not anywhere near as bad as what you see online. I think that's because I'm so far away from San Francisco, which apparently is the fucking epicenter of this, that uh I've got a little bit of a, a buffer in place to protect me. What's my opinion on Bongland? Love Bongland. And just as much as you probably like Clapistan. So I think we're even in terms of that. Uh, all right. Dear I, opinions on Mossad and uh, Mossad and what? There was a second part to that, but it rang by. Or it flew by quickly. So re ask it if you can. Digra DARPA, talk about a bit. Digra DARPA. Well, I know that, you know, King of Pole and Sargon and all those other guys are working on something looking through the Digra stuff. Um, where is it? I, I did for a while. Listen, again, it, it for me, at least with the DARPA funding, it comes down to letting incompetent people have access to tax money. I don't like that. That's why I tweeted to DARPA itself, if you want to waste your fucking money, go on Craigslist. Because if you're financing people and people connected to other people that are making statements like peer review is bullshit and we need to basically shove down the throats of everybody our stupid fucking beliefs, there's an issue going on. Ah, uh, fuck. And I had access to all this shit before and now I can't find it. Um, where is it here? Oh, I think this might be it. Okay, yeah. I'm going to post this on Twitter. And you can go take a look at it there. If I post the link in, uh, if I post the link on the YouTube stream or whatever, it's just going to get buried. So uh, there we go. That is the, um, so Project Immerse had uh, essentially applications that you had to fill out. 
if you want to kind of see the connection between DIGRA and DARPA, I guess, if that's what you're, you're looking for, that would be the link to start with. Because that particular individual, Michael Mateus, I think, that's, again, I think that's the guy that did um, Facade, if you remember playing that game. I think this is the guy who designed it. But he's done keynote speeches for DIGRA, from what I understand. He's done a lot of research for them for years and years and years. And if you, another cool thing, if you go to the website um, that he's listed on, let me see if I can find the name of it, the particular one. Uh, is it, it's not the School of Engineering. Where is it? Fuck. Oh, if you go to Center for Playable, or for Games and Playable Media, and then you look under people, and not faculty or staff, but look under students, you like this. And then scroll down to the bottom of the page and look under uh, digital arts and new media. Look at the names listed there, and you'll see that a particular name should stand out from that leaked DIGRA conversation. And I believe that person was a student or is a student of his. So there are a lot of connections. It's interesting shit. Ebola Chan loves me. All right. No, the funny thing about the Ebola Chan shit, didn't Ari land? Like, they got it. They picked up right away that that was a fucking joke. So how is it a forum, or a forum, an image board used in Nigeria gets that that's a fucking joke? But apparently mainstream media thinks that there is some concerted effort to start voodoo on people in Africa using Ebola Chan. What in the fuck? Uh, Camera Lady wants to know if... Camera Lady wants to know if you like Indefensible? Or indie, oh, indie feasible. Indie feasible. I'm blanking on that right now. I've had a long day, so my mind's kind of fucked up right now. Give me a second, and I'll unfuck it, and then answer the question. Uh, where do I go for news? Are there any reliable sources? Um, I've started to use different sites that are out there. I mean, I'll swing by GameSnosh and Tech Raptor. I'll swing by um, Niche Gamer and that kind of stuff. But generally, I like other people's opinions. Uh, I'll talk to people I know, or I'll just go on an image board, like um, 8chan or 4chan or whatever, and just fucking listen to how people are talking about it. It seems more straightforward. Thoughts on 8chan's founder Hot Wheels? I've, I've seen a lot of posted about him. It, you know, I, I Scoot seems fine by me. I don't know. I, I have no problems with Scoots, so... Jim, can we hear, where was it? Jim, can we hear your thoughts on 8chan? And people, yeah, it's like the fourth time you've asked. Like I said, 8chan I have no problem with. I've, I've been to the V board, I've been to Poll, and I've been to GG on 8chan. It seems fine to me. And they let you talk about whatever the fuck you want to talk about. So as, compared to 4chan right now, that's way better. Oh, Indie Feasible, her videos. I'm sorry, fuck. I liked the videos. I watched them. I, I know that there were a few things that they were a little off about, but listen, you know, if you want to dig through all that shit and start finding connections, why not? Seems fine to me. Uh, half the reason the majority of shit that we're even talking about and seeing right now is out is because people took the time to dig through and be obsessive and look at stuff and really track it down. I like that kind of stuff. It's interesting to watch and find out what people find. IA Steam says I can't add you. That's because I haven't paid Gabe money yet. You know, I know I got shit on for that uh, Steam video, but fuck you all, I stand by what I said. That feature, if I remember right, before they implemented the community market and they did the card system and the level systems, there wasn't a fucking cap on how many friends you could have. Or at least not a starting cap on it. It was a subtle way of basically nickel and diming people for just a little bit more. And uh, I just, I, I don't know. It just, I don't like it, I guess. Or I'd let you, if you're going to do that, at least let me just pay you directly. I don't want to fuck around with the community market. And I know people say, oh, you can just play games and earn cards and go through the trading system. But I can't trade cards and I can't, you know, earn car. Or money has to enter the system at some point. Somebody's paying for shit when they, you know, buy cards from you or when you buy cards from them. Money's exchanging hands. You can't just trade your way on and on and on. It, it's not going to happen. Uh, let's see. Debate uh, debate Aaron. 
You're talking about Grongy or Grongy or I, I don't know how the fuck I say his last name, to be honest. I don't know what I debate him about. Uh, somebody had mentioned that he had wanted to do a debate before, but I ended up getting sidetracked doing something else and looking into shit was the group of people. And so I just, I didn't have the ability. I didn't have time. Uh, check my Twitter shit Lord. All right. All right, Jim, thoughts on Rebecca Watson's GG video she released last night? I haven't even seen it. Um, so I, I don't I don't actually know what her video is about. I'll check it out later, I guess. And let's see what I think. Uh, let's see. Why you got that UKIP Leaders mug on your Steam account? Uh, because he's got a magnificent face. How can you not like that look? Look at him. He's a happy son of a bitch. That big fucking chuckle. It's a great picture. I don't know. I don't know why you don't like it. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see. It used to be 300 friends. There's also hundreds of people that would give you a bunch of cards to add you. Yeah, but then uh, that's from somebody on Twitter. Yeah, but then I, I'd feel weird about doing that. I don't. I don't want to take shit from people. I don't even listen. I don't like the wish. This really pisses me off. This isn't something you know Valve did to intentionally fuck with people. It's just I wish there was another way to do this. I don't like the wish list feature on Steam. I just wish they had a bookmark feature that was private. Or maybe there is a way to do this and I just don't know. I don't want people buying me games, but I want to at least be able to mark down what games I'm interested in. So when they go on sale, I can easily check through the list and just be like, oh shit, this is 40% off or 50% off or whatever. The only problem is with a wish list, it's public. So I've had people send me games and then I, I, I fucking hate that because I feel like if I, if I refuse, it's being rude. So I accept it, but then I feel like I owe them, so I have to send them something back in exchange. So I'm just fucking myself out of money, because I'm an idiot. But yeah, I don't like taking stuff from people. Uh, cards, money, that's why I don't have ads on. That's why I don't have a Patreon or a Kickstarter or any of that shit. It just it, it feels weird to me. Uh, Jim, why is Joss Whedon such a beta male pussy? I don't know, maybe he drank the Kool-Aid. Maybe his proximity to the types of people we're fighting against in Gamergate have influenced him in a way that he can't unfuck his mind. I don't know. You'd have to ask Joss Whedon. Oh, let's see. Somebody on Steam, they just, what is this? They just implemented a follow feature. Uh, smile for meter, or smile for me, dear. Jesus. What do you mean a follow feature? Ah, oh, and because of the delay, I'll hear back in about five minutes. Okay, let's go back over here. Oh, you can gift me uh, Team Fortress 2. Oh, well, of course. Who wouldn't want another copy of that? Uh, my opinions on Adam Sessler. You know, <laughs> before, uh, I used to like, uh, I liked Tech TV. I don't know if you guys ever watch Tech TV, like Call for Help and that kind of stuff, like Leo Laporte. Tech TV was fucking great. I really, really liked Tech TV as a channel, and I loved their fucking programming. And then the merger with G4 happened. And I thought, oh, shit. Um, you know, at first I thought, it's going to be great, right? It'll be video games and technology. How can that possibly go wrong? But, you know, as we found out, G4 instead just kind of cannibalized Tech TV and kept, what was it, X-Play, and what was the other show they kept? Attack of the Show, I think, for a little while, and they pretty much got rid of everything else. I can't remember the name of it, but there was like a late-night show with the white guy and the black chick that was really fucking funny. Um, they also had like a... Uh, God, I can't remember the names of half of these people or their shows, but there was also another one um, where it was like they take questions from the phone and from online. It was two chicks, basically, that did like a weekly show or a daily show maybe even. But yeah, I really liked it. But so they kept X-Play around, and I thought it was going to be good. And I liked watching X-Play. I liked Adam and Morgan. But I don't know what the fuck has happened to Adam. He is... Uh, he <laughs> I see all the cocaine and meth uh, references. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. Uh, but yeah. And now everybody's talking about uh, Tech TV. Tech TV was great, wasn't it? Tech TV was fucking amazing. Uh, Jim, what are your thoughts on SRS Docs List? Are you talking about the one that got posted with, like, um, what was it? Uh, Adam Baldwin, Milo, Boogie, and there were, uh, there were a couple other people on there, too. 
uh, shoe on head and I, who are the other ones? I, 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 they've all released statements, haven't they? I mean, a couple of them said the docs were inaccurate. The other one said who gives a shit or it was just, you know, publicly available information or old information. Unscrewed with Martin Sargent. Fuck, thank you. Uh, the Return of Zack. Yeah, that was the fucking one I was thinking of. Screensavers. Yeah, that was a really good one too. Yeah, Call for Help and Screensavers were fucking amazing. And the thing that sucks is the only you can find full episodes of those on YouTube, but they're like 240p, and I can't remember what happened. Uh, the guy who posted them on his channel said something to the effect of, "They're they were like on a computer's hard drive or something, but they weren't the master tape, so the quality was just fucking awful." But he's like, "Well, at least it's something." But occasionally I'll go watch them again because I, I really like them. Call for Help and Screensavers; those were fucking amazing shows. And fuck G four for what it did to Tech TV. I mean, what what did they do exactly? You have a, a network that doesn't even it does it even show video games anymore? Does it show technology anymore? It's the last I saw it was nothing but eleven hours of cheaters and you know fucking thirteen hours of cops. That was that's what G four has become. If it even still exists, didn't that go under now too? I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts on Matt Clark from IGN attacking Milo on Twitter? Was it Matt or was it Matt Clark the one that went on like a tirade a couple nights ago? And his Twitter's deleted now, isn't it? Uh, again, it's like I know some of this stuff, and doing the video, I've been going through a lot of shit, but my mind is fried from it. That's why I had to push it back. There's there's too much shit to cover, and so I had to I needed a couple more nights essentially. <laughs> Uh, where do you get skill in uh, I where do you get skill in debate, argument creation, and information gathering? Are you just asking me that generally where you do that? I have no idea. I'm shit at it. Most people are shit at it. G4 is now Esquire. Well, that's fitting. G4 is dead. I'm not going to shed a tear for that. Fuck them. <laughs> G4 did to tech what sci-fi did to science fiction. Cops and Cheaters, yeah, that's that's really what it was. It was nothing but that. G4 killed nerd programming of the network. Yeah, a again, that's bullshit. I just don't fucking understand it. And, like, Tech TV had some really fucking unique shit. Like, they, they showed, like, a two-hour anime block um, at, like, midnight. And they also had this really weird show where it would just show, like, clips of video games and shit and other stuff. And that's all it was. There wasn't, like, a host or anything. Um, that was really good, too. Oh, uh, let's see. When do you think you'll go back to Sissisms? Will you mention the Homestuck fandom? Yeah, like, uh, you're talking about Tumblrisms? Yeah, I, I already mentioned um, the next one will either be Rape Culture or Other Kins. And yes, I will eventually talk about Homestuck. Uh, actually, I'm going to jump back over to Twitter, see if they got anything they want to ask. Someone asked about your nudes. It's probably not directed at me. Oh, okay. Yes, I, I, okay, that was directed at somebody else. Fucking Twitter, man. Uh, Tech TV should be on archive.org. Uh, if that's true, I'll check it out. Because I'd, I'd rewatch the shit out of their stuff. Uh, it's called Follow Games and Software. Oh, shit. Okay, I see what you're saying. So there is a way, basically, to bookmark uh, games you're interested in so it doesn't show up on wishlist. If that's the case, I'm just going to delete the wishlist then and uh, follow the games, I guess, if that's the equivalent of bookmarking it. Who do you think is behind the doxing, uh, fighting on capitalist hack, Milo Needle, escapist DDoSing? Don't want this to end without knowing. If I had to guess, I'd just say it's a, a third party fucking about, more than likely. I, I don't know. Could, could be a whole host of things. I think you've got, you know, you probably have groups that are on, you know, uh, fuck, I don't know how to explain this. I'm going to say it's a third party. There have been some statements that make me think I have an idea, but I, I don't know for sure. Anytime there's a shitstorm going on, there's always going to be completely unrelated parties that are drawn towards it that just want to wreak a little havoc and have some fun. That would be my guess, but I can't say for sure one way or the other. Uh, in an hour sked, uh, people like you, uh, people like you, and they're going to give you free shit because they appreciate you. They don't expect anything in return. Yeah. That, I, I, listen, I don't like the feeling of 
when you accept something from somebody, you're beholden to them. That's the way I look at it. And I just, I don't like the feeling of owing somebody something. That's why I pay my bills on time. That's why, you know, I, I steer cr uh, clear of like credit cards and stuff. I don't like the feeling of owing or being indebted. And I get what you're saying, like, oh, if somebody gives you a gift, whatever. But to me, for whatever reason, it feels like I owe them. I don't know them. They just gave me something. It feels like I should reciprocate. It feels like the thing you should do. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Is Funny Junk actually a bastion of free speech, or is it just a bunch of hype? When this all started, it was, and it still is, really, one of the only sites you can post whatever the fuck you want on. Uh, I'd say Funny Junk is what it's saying it is and the way it's behaving, which is letting you post whatever you want. So as far as alternatives go, if you've got something you want to post related to, you know, games journalists or Gamergate or whatever, Funny Junk would be a place to go. They're not going to block you and ban you and delete your content. Oh, this one's good. Oh, uh, let's see. Am, is somebody's asking me if I'm Ken Ashcorp. No, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know why. I've seen that float around a couple of times. No, I'm not. We don't sound anything alike. I have no fucking musical talent. I'm completely untalented when it comes to music or art. I'm fucking horrible at that shit. That's why it impresses me a lot. Uh, because I can't do it. So no, I'm not him. Uh, would you ever consider doing an investigation in SJWs and academia, government, science, and law? Yeah, that would be fun. I, I talked about the source and, you know, behind a lot of it. And it is academia. It's a specific part of it. Um, but yeah, it'd be fun to do a video series on that if people were interested. But I have no idea if they'd be interested or not. But I like Homestuck. Does that make me an SJW? No, it doesn't. I know there's confusion. Like people still are struggling with this idea of what a, a social justice warrior is. They're horrible people. So really, it shouldn't. You shouldn't be asking yourself, "But I'm gay, or I'm transsexual, or I like Homestuck, or I do this, or I do that." Just ask yourselves: Are you the world's biggest asshole that uses other people as a shield to fucking avoid criticism? Do you live in a hug box? Are you hypersensitive? Can you admit that you, you know, are you incapable of admitting you've done something wrong? You know, if that's the type of shit you're answering affirmative to, then yeah, you're a social justice warrior. They're terrible people. Uh, just because you, yeah, you're not one. Just because you like Homestuck. What is my opinion on illegal drugs? I don't use illegal drugs. As far as pot goes, watch the states that legalized it. I'm sure they're making a fucking ton of money. Uh, through secondary businesses and taxation. So, who knows? <laughs> Do I ever read the Tumblr in action subreddit? Uh, I'm not, I, I've mentioned this before, I'm not a Redditor. I don't use Reddit. I have on occasion gone to Tumblr in action because somebody linked me there. Um, and I have gone there twice in relation to, there was a specific Tumblr blog for one of the videos that I could not find, basically I'd gone through and I looked at what they were saying and I forgot to screen cap it. And when I went back, it was gone. <laughs> and so the only place that actually ended up having a fucking screen cap of that was Tumblr in action. So when I did the search term for it, they popped up. I went there and got the image and I was good to go. Uh, let's see. Do you feel the Gamergate movement is slowing down at all? No. Nope. I don't think so. Uh, you look at, you know, God, there have been a ton of articles all over the fucking place. People are making videos. People are doing streams about it all over the fucking place. Uh, you know, I, I talk about it. I'll talk about it in the video on Saturday. Um, in relation to people, I'm not going to go into it now, but I'll I, you'll hear about it on Saturday. Oh, let's see. Go back to the stream here. What's my view on porn? Everybody watches porn. I have no view on it. It's a pretty, it's a very mundane thing to ask about. Uh, somebody saying something sensitive. Uh, yeah, I like their threads where they go on about moderation. It's funny as shit. Um, if I don't know if you've ever gone there and seen the threads where they talk about uh, something awful moderators and <laughs> go go through who they are, um, those are fucking those are a riot to read. Well, 
let's see. Are you a horse fucker? No, yeah, I talked about this in the uh, whatever Hugbox Chronicle video it was. I don't watch MLP. There's no, I, it just doesn't appeal to me. It's not something I'm really, I, I don't know the names of the imaginary horses. I still get shit for calling uh, molestasia. And then they say that's the wrong way of saying it. it. Sounds more fucking regal to me, all right, than molestia. But whatever. Neogaf isn't discussing pro gamergate articles, or isn't discussing the pro gamergate article by TechCrunch. Of course, Neogaf's not fucking discussing it. You can't go to Neogaf and post and give an honest opinion. You need to suck Evil Or's dick. You need to suck the dicks of the moderators and admins. There have been so many screen caps of the fucking ban messages from people who dared to step out of line. Look at what happened to Boogie when he went over there and tried to talk about Gamergate or anything really against the fucking groupthink mentality. He just got hammered on fucking nonstop. I know people are pissed at Boogie, always fence-sitting, and he's jumping back and forth, but he got the holy shit kicked out of him over on NeoGAF for daring to even try to bring up a counterpoint to any of their bullshit. Do you think a video crash is coming? Um, yeah, but I don't think it's related. I, 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 yes, but I don't think it's related to gaming journalism. I'm sorry if I'm going silent here for minutes at a time. I'm trying to read or read through shit. How cringy is MLP? I don't even know. I don't fucking watch the show unless you're talking about like the. Are you talking about the 4chan board? I, I went by the 4chan MLP board when I did the video about um, whatever the fuck her name was and just the crazy shit about that. I, I went into a thread and asked them in for, you know, for information and they gave it to me. The board seems fine to me. You know, I walked in. They know I'm not a fucking... Uh, they know I don't watch the fucking show and I'm not part of the whole brony shit, but they, they were nice enough when I asked them for the information. What do you think of the 4chan nude hoax? I thought that was funny how quickly the mainstream press turned around on that. You talking about ranting and stuff? You know, oh god, 4chan's going after Emma Watson and ooh, and then the next day it's oh no, it was a giant fucking hoax. So that was pretty entertaining to watch how quickly that turned around. Even social justice warriors hate Neogaf. No, they don't. Uh, they live at Neogaf. Is where social. You want to see what I'm talking about? Go to Neogaf. And try to talk about, <laughs> start a fucking thread on NeoGAF about anything to do, or go into a thread on NeoGAF about anything to do with race or sex in games. If you do not follow 100% what everybody else is posting, you will be banned. They will pick a reason out of their ass and they will ban you. That is the reality of NeoGAF. And of course they're talking about dumb shit like that in relation to video games because it's SJW Hub. You know, NeoGAF is uh, the forum version of Tumblr. What would be the leading cause of a modern video game? Wait, oh, of a modern video game crash? Well, think about it. I mean, you have oversaturation of the market. Before when it happened, you know, the first crash when it took place, it was the the hardware makers couldn't regulate who was putting software out, so they were just all this shitty, all these shitty games were flooding the market, and people were getting ripped off, and they got very angry about that. Now what we have is it's sort of the same thing. Games are coming out, but instead of you know, like a thousand shitty games, we've got maybe a hundred decent games, but they're just pumping out shitty DLC and shitty add-ons and shitty, you know, early access and shitty this and shitty that. Games have found a way, and it's genius from a business point of view, but it's only short-term and the way it's going to give them gains, not long-term. Early access, you were paying a game company to beta test their product, is really what early access is. They have they have put the cost of having people that would usually do this internally off on you as the consumer, and you happily agree to it. And then after the early access period is over, and you have your copy of the game, then you got to go buy the 48 pieces of DLC. So again, it's not like a thousand shitty games. It's just a few. You know, it's like a handful of normal games with shitty aspects to them, and that's kind of like the way it's flooding the market right now. I, I, fuck. I mean, look at fighting games are notorious for this. You've got, you know, character DLC, you've got fucking costume DLC, and it's not necessary, but it just, I don't, just put a fucking product out that's complete for once. I don't need 4,000 fucking add-ons to my game. I just want, just make a fucking complete game.
Uh, somebody's talking about MILFs. That's always that's always lovely. All right, I'm gonna pop back over to Twitter here. See what they got to say. Uh, I'm blown away by how little self-awareness the mainstream media publications show. Uh, are you talking in relation to them covering Gamergate? Or are you talking about they're covering the Emma Watson thing? Um, yeah. I, I, again, <laughs> the press has issues. I agree with that. Uh, where do I join in the chat for your stream? It should be through YouTube. If you go to the YouTube link, I'm sure it's out there by now. You can comment in the chat thing, and well, if I if I see it, it goes by pretty quickly. But I'll answer if I see your question. I'm not going to dodge you. Uh, let's see. I've noticed Anita currying favor with the SJW crowd by adding trigger warnings to her videos. What the fuck is a trigger? A trigger warning is ridiculous, is what a trigger warning is. You know, post-traumatic stress syndrome, like, that exists. If you go to a war zone, you're getting fucking shell-shocked. I mean, they're, they're taking something that was really a condition for somebody that's either been in a war zone or has been through the most horrific thing you can imagine. And later on in life, you know, like, it's a soldier returning from the battlefield, and somebody, you know, during the 4th of July sets off a bottle rocket, and he hears it. And it gives him a fucking horrible flashback of being in the jungles getting shot at or something like that. Uh, so a trigger warning is basically what a bunch of middle-class white suburbanite social justice warriors use to try to mimic that. Like, oh my god, I'm so triggered by the fact that you mentioned that word and that word makes me sad. And that's the same as a fucking soldier that got shot at not wanting to hear a bottle rocket go off behind his head. Like, fuck these people. They're so overly sensitive. And it's not realistic. The real world is not going to fucking coddle you. The thing that really pisses me off with trigger warnings is that they're trying to get them on college syllabi. Like, There's no reason trigger warning should be on that. You're going to try to tell me there's a problem with fucking Shakespeare? They tried to get a trigger warning on Merchant of Venice saying it was anti-Semitic and uh, other works of Shakespeare because of violence and misogyny and sexism and racism. W okay, what does a trigger warning accomplish, especially in a college setting? What are you telling me then? that you can't partake in that particular assignment or that coursework because you're too triggered to do it? What a lazy way to get a degree. Why wouldn't everybody be offended then? Oh my God, I can't do this engineering course because everything about numbers and engineering triggers me. So you're just going to have to give me an A because if you don't, I'll sue you because uh, I've got post-traumatic bullshit disorder. That's, that's what they have. Post-traumatic bullshit disorder. It's PTBD is what these fuckers have. Twitter PTSD is apparently worse than the real world PTSD. Oh, somebody's asking to play Gauntlet. I uh, that's from Steam, by the way. I played that. Uh, he, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to talk about Gauntlet because I'll probably get people angry if I do. I played the um, the first four levels or the first act, however you want to define it, of Gauntlet. You know, you, you basically you go in through one doorway and you've got three segments to it, and there are four of those, so twelve levels in one act, I guess. Um, it's a good game, and it's fun with other people, but it's not fun on the same level that the older gauntlets were. It's not as arcadey as the older gauntlets were. There aren't you. You fight over what a, a crown that gives you power up or it gives you points at the end of the level, really. So you're kind of competing for score, I guess, which is a neat feature. And then you have you know abilities through what is it? Are they the relics or whatever they are? Uh, you can get potions to activate those, and that's fine. But it just it feels like it's lacking in that regard. I remember like uh, the arcade gauntlets and uh, the N64 versions, and those were fun. The NES, or the NES versions, those were fun. This, it doesn't, it doesn't, gauntlet doesn't feel gauntlet-y enough to me for some reason. And I didn't like that, at least for the first act, those first 12 levels or whatever, that every second level, so you go through the door where you got three levels, every second level was the same, and I get it, you're running the gauntlet from death. But it was the same, un, you know, uh, you couldn't defeat this guy. You have to run from him. And it was just, I don't want to do a chase sequence every fucking second level. It takes the fun and surprise out of it for me. But that's minor bitching. It's a 20 buck game. Uh, you know, it's worth the money. Especially if you have friends. You'll get your, you'll get your bang for your buck, I guess. It's, it's fucking longer than God Mode was. <laughs> Christ. 
why is my voice so sexy? It's not. My mic is shit. My voice is shot right now. I'm sure it's probably coming through crap quality. That's what happens when you're too poor to go out and buy decent mic equipment or get a decent fucking computer. Uh, bring me on IA, King of Pole. Gah, how would I even do this? Uh, let's see. There should be some place that gives me a link. Oh, where is it? Oh, invite people. All right, let's try this. Oh, well, that's right. You can't send fucking private messages unless you follow somebody. Some stupid shit like that. All right, try this again. Okay. <clears throat> if that was actually King of Pole and he wanted to come on, I sent you a DM with the fucking address invite. Unless it's somebody just fucking with me, in which case the random invite just went out, so <laughs> good luck, troll. Go to your Twitter account. I gave you a link. If you click on the link, it'll directly bring you into the chat. I know that it's implemented through Google Plus and there are other ways of doing it, but I just send the link because it, it seems to work easier for me. Oh, let's see. All right, give me a second here, see if I can get this to work. He's all confused now, I bet. Three thousand people are listening right now. Again, I can't see the number of people listening. It always fucking stalls up on me. What do I think of Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft? I don't own any of the next gen systems. Which is, you know, I, yeah, I'm calling Wii U next gen. I know that's funny, but am I in? Am I good? Let me mute shit. I believe so. I think you're in. Oh, what's up, man? <laughs> I literally was just I was fucking around, but I didn't really expect. Okay, how's it going? That's going fine. Uh, so, oh God, I'm just reading your chat, man. It's going insane. Do you like Blizzard games? Uh, you know, what? I'll let you continue talking. I'm gonna be quiet for a moment. Uh, um, okay. Uh, yeah, I like Blizzard games. I play a lot of StarCraft. Brood like Wars. Them. Brood Wars. Not not this fucking StarCraft two shit. Um, you, uh, you was talking about the Digra stuff. I don't know if you were, uh, you said we were looking into it. We're still, we're still digging into it. We keep giving stuff to Milo, uh, and he's just, like, looking into it more so for us to verify things of what we can, and then it comes really right back to us. So, in that aspect, I, I mean, there's so much stuff coming in and out. I literally got, uh, chewed out the other day because I gave too much out, and it's like, we're trying to contain it because we keep catching shit. Right, well, my, my recommendation would be looking into Mateus. Um, that's going to oh. be your bench bin link between the two. You talking about Ma Mayo? You talking about Mayo, the, the president? No, Michael Mateus, the guy who takes the applications through um, through the games program at UCSC. Yeah. Uh, his name is the guy. He's the guy running Project Immerse. He's the, he's the gatekeeper. If you want to work on Immerse, you go through him. He's also connected to Digra, and his students include Squeaky, the chick that was in the leaked Google. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you get a chance, go look at the president and go look at some of her articles. Yesterday, I don't know if you were watching my stream yesterday. Yesterday, we were reading one of her articles she wrote, uh, and she was talking about her. Uh, it, it's just it's crazy, and she was talking about her experiences with Anita Sarkeesian, and this was back in like 2011. She wrote this article, and she was just a chairman on the board of all the Digger communities. And when we started finding out, there's actual chapters of Digger in each in each country, and there's really it's like uh, it's like it's cultish. Found, Oh yeah, it, okay. So we found we found a uStream, uh, and I'm not gonna go into where that uStream is. And they were it's it's uh, one of the chapters, and they were like you. We had to decipher because it, it was another language, and there was like they were dropping big names here and there, and then they were talking about like indoctrination tactics of how to bring people into this, and they and the plans that they had, like agendas that they were gonna be pushing uh, to continue on whatever the hell they were doing. There was some stuff with an Australian chapter that came out, videos from there. There's not much videos out there, surprisingly. 
on these guys. They keep. Well, you, you need to look at stuff like um, Critical Theory. <laughs> you need to go look up those videos because that's got a lot of, uh, like all these groups. Again, there's a lot of interconnectedness because the people that are parts of these different groups all communicate with one another and they all do different events with one another. But yeah, it's very cultish. Um, that you've got, you want to call them social justice warriors, cultural Marxists, whatever label, doesn't really matter to me, but you've got stuff like DIGRA, and if you look at XOXO Fest, which is just supposed to be this tech thing, right, out in fucking California. <laughs> you could call that a cult itself. Have you read, seen some of the things on there? It's yeah, but that's, that's what I'm saying. Go look at the people, you know all those pictures you're looking through? Yeah. Yeah, go look at the people who were giving those presentations and find out what they're connected to, and that's a whole fucking big world. Well, we and yeah. there was a lot of Gawker Media and Vox there. I mean, there was a lot of people. Oh, we started with Leah Alexander and Anita, obviously, and then we kind of just moved down the list. And moved. that was like where we started. And we started moving down there, and it led to like shit like Patreon, and we were looking into money laundering and like dump accounts that led to crazy ass shit. Like, we'd find like a dump account. Where they was just this blank account, but it had a Twitter, and they Twitter was only active when money was sent out or siphoned through something. And then the only people that it was fo that followed it were like major companies, like like there was one with like Asus and another. It was really weird. It was like weird, like you you we you know I don't know. We kind of ran into a dead end with that one for a while, but just the shit that was going on with that. And then the guy who runs Patreon and the founder of Kickstarter as well. I, it's there's a really a lot of shady shit. And and if you guys oh, yeah. anybody. Anybody in the chat? Because there's like three thousand of you guys. Like you were saying before, if you guys are good at digging, better than us. Because we're just we're just fucking couple guys, just like you guys. And nothing we like me, Sargon, Rogue. All of us that were in these Skype, these public Skype calls, we were sitting down, and we were like, okay, let's start banging some shit out and spending like hours and hours just going and siphoning through things. Uh, which last night we were doing the archives thing. That was a fucking debacle. Um, well, yeah. I mean, last night I, I know you were doing a stream. I, I got a chance to check out a little bit of it, but I, I went on Skype and then. Like, you have to manually click through a uh, contact request, so it took forever to go through yeah. them. And then I, I felt bad because I hadn't been on there for a while, so I was talking to some people. But, um, yeah, the, like, Digger XOXO, you look at... there, There's shit going on. Um, and I think that with the gaming journalist stuff, that it, it all leads into itself. But again, you have this core group of people that really are at the center of a lot of it, and I think the more you dig, you're going to start to see that picture better. When you're looking at Silver Strings and XOXO, when you're looking at Digger, when you're looking at you know Patreon even right. or Kickstarter, um, you're going to start seeing names that consistently pop up in each of those. Um, and I wouldn't put it past. I don't, I'm not saying Patreon as a service is bad. It's an interesting idea, mm -hmm. but I think the use that it's being used for right now is just nefarious. Uh, at, right. And look at the owner. I would, if you ever get a chance, by any chance, I don't know if you want to look into it, but look into the owner of Patron and who he's connected to, and then it's going to lead back to a guy named John, Jonathan McIntosh. If you take a time to find out who that guy is, you're going to have a lot of fun uh, getting into a whole video about that guy. Just look in John McIntosh if you ever get a chance. That guy is really, like every, like you just said, the name that keeps going back is that fucking guy. And that's, hey, that's you're talking about... Uh... Wait, we're not talking about McIntosh. You're talking about a different guy. Not we're not talking about the one connected to Anita, are we? Yeah, yeah, that guy, that guy, the guy who's supposedly the the puppet pulling the puppet strings. Everybody keeps saying I don't know whether or not. I'm not gonna say that, but I that's it. Just says, all I'm saying is, is every time we go back, it's like Anita, and then from Anita it goes to John McIntosh, and then it's like we look at it with, the way that we were looking at it was like this guy seems to be interjected with like every piece. That kind of well, comes together. And see, that, that's the thing with sacred cows. Like, they treat Anita mm -hmm. and they treat you know people like Zoe. They treat these people like sacred cows, but then right. you can't you can't look into them. You can't you know debate them. You can't criticize them. So what perfect front? You know what I mean for doing shit that's underhanded? Because you can't go after them. So why wouldn't they be connected to it? They know they're never going to get touched. Right, right. And it's just I. I... I don't know. In my, in my, like I said, I'm just a guy, and we're, there's only a few of us, like maybe like a dozen of us that have been doing this, and we've been doing it for hours and hours, and we just take the time to research it. And like I said, it's like you, Jim. It's like if you guys in chat, if you're good at that kind of stuff, you should really take the time to look into this stuff. And if you get stuff and you can, and it's credible, send it to the right people. You got Milo. Email it to these fucking people that will get stuff done. So. I think that's really where that comes into play because it's like, like I said, the stuff I'm talking about we're still looking into and it's just dropping name here as theirs, but it's there's a lot of stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, it's interconnected. There's a lot of shit. They, they wash each other's – one hand washes the other kind of shit. Um, yeah, that's kind of – It's and, very creepy. It, it, yeah, it's scary. We go, uh, Me and Sargon say scary. Some people said creepy because the stuff that we've started – especially with the, the Digger chapter thing, that was the scariest shit I've ever seen.
Because the shit, especially if you guys ever take the time, um, go look up the Australian Digra, Digra chapter video and go take your time to watch that. And then you'll immediately be like, okay, I don't know what the fuck Digra is anymore. <laughs> right. It's, it's, not, it's, so it's, weird. Not, it's not related to gaming. Oh, well, I mean, I touched on this in one of the streams, but and I'll say it again because I think it bears repeating. Mm -hmm. Or no, I, I, I talked about this with Milo during his uh, radio thing. Um, gamers are an enormous demographic. And that has a lot of potential in elections for voting. If you can influence the way gamers think, and if you can influence the way they talk and behave, you can influence right. how they vote. So, you know, there are two ways of doing it. You can approach gamers as a business and say, you know, hey, I'm going to be up front, uh, and this is how we're going to conduct shit. Or you can try to do it underhanded and guilt trip them into behaving a certain way. And I think with Degra and stuff like that, it's guilt trip. We're going to badger you so much that you agree with our ideology, and then you vote the way we want. And I know that sounds silly, but again, it's a billion-dollar international mm. industry. With uh, look how many gamers or how many fucking PS2s and Xboxes and shit have been sold in the United States. You, you have a lot of people who played, you know, Super Mario Brothers when they were kids are voting age now. So right, it right. doesn't it doesn't surprise me you're going to start to see <clears throat> vultures circling that hobby. I mean, it, you that would make that makes sense in a sense if you're like comparing it to something like when the uh, the Democrats were using the illegal immigrants to kind of bring them in for uh, you know you know I'm talking about like buying votes kind of thing. Yep. Uh, but I I don't know I I want I just want to disagree because when I look at it in my perspective I, I look at it as like okay uh, the people who are definitely coming involved it's kind of like what's the words I want to use here? I'll tell you what the best quote if you want to term it. The best way you can describe it is a serendipitous conspiracy. Like people right, have ideas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they have this idea that like a conspiracy is a bunch of people getting together before something happens in a dark room where nobody can see them and saying, you know, how can we take over the world? But a serendipitous conspiracy is you have a bunch of really shitty people that all have shitty goals, and mm -hmm. at some point they notice each other and they're like, oh fuck, let's work together to make that happen. So. See it's happenstance that they all happen to come right. together. But, and yeah. see, the reason why I put holes in that is because we sat down and we started looking at the people who were behind a lot of the stuff that was pushing it, Matt Lee, Zoe Quinn, Anita Sarkeesian, all those kind of people that were really behind this, the Ben Kucheras and stuff. And then we started uh, – we signed up for like Ancestry.com and stuff, and we started looking up their, their family heritage and where they were coming from. And the majority of these people are what you would be calling hedge fund babies. And and, and it was just – and then our mind – like me and Sargon sitting there, and we're like, so are these kids – are these guys just kids that are like are just rich kids and this is their pet project, or is there more? to it I mean it was it was so fucking confusing as as we were looking at it, but it was just there it seemed like the majority of these people who had a lot of the influence were really like really rich people or had rich families and rich backgrounds to fall back on and it just seemed like hedge fund kids like it just they could just this was their thing where they just uh, of course to they're hedge funds kid like a lot of these again it goes back to the social justice warrior perspective yeah right. of course they're hedge fund kids they don't know what it's like to have a shitty life they've never struggled so they invent oppression so they can, you know, try to vicariously live through it. They don't know what it's like to live in a gutter, to have a shitty job, to live in a country where you get your ass kicked for being a certain way. So they invent all these things like micro or micro transact or aggressions, whatever the fuck they are. Um, they invent this imaginary oppression so they can feel good by feeling bad. Um, it's just they're fucking twisted people. They really, really are fucking twisted people. Yeah, and exactly. But here's the cra weirdest thing about the whole thing. When we started finding about the the hedge fund, the hedge fund stuff, is that the families that we were looking at, the majority of them were people who worked in businesses like Wall Street. Like there was a guy who did analytics for Wall Street, another guy who would audit uh, the accountants who handled big business money in New York City, and they're all connected back to kind of mostly New York City and Chicago, a couple in San Francisco here and there. But the majority of them, they worked with the, the, the families. Why were like CEOs of big companies that handled finances and big stuff and and so we sat back and I was like so it, they're capitalists right so why the fuck would their kids come out and be the way they are or, or are they globalists in the sense that when they look at that you, you know what I'm saying it, it, it was like so confusing when we were looking back at how these kids were all hedge like triggered back to rich families and being hedge fund babies it just made no sense why the families are like that unless they're globalists and now in my opinion that's right uh, but I mean you find that happening a lot I mean kids generally rebel against whatever their parents are uh, but th that's the funny thing. They have no problem living off mommy and daddy's money, but they don't mm -hmm. like mommy and daddy's business. <laughs> yeah. You know, fuck daddy for being a CEO or, you know, running a bank or working on Wall Street. How terrible capitalism is bad. But I'll use his millions of dollars to sit on my fat, lazy ass and bitch about it. Right. I'll use it to make connections to fuck with other people's lives. Right. And, and that was the kind of thing we are sitting there. And so… Uh, when we were all looking at it, because I, because uh, it was obvious that most of the majority of the families, it was like, dude, these people are capitalists. Just the way they run things, the way they do things, it would make sense that they're capitalists. 
in that aspect. But I was like, but unless they're globalists, because their kids are fucking running amok and playing and playing crazy. And I was like, how do these families stay out of the limelight to where they don't want to get the shit? And then, like a prime example, Zoe Quinn. I know she's irrelevant, but when we were looking into her, like her last name, her whole name doesn't even match up to what her real name is. And like she adopted the, a name from like her adopted, or not adopted. I'm sorry, from like her new father or whatever, and their mother got remarried. It's like I don't know. It, it, and maybe the kids are trying to get away from it. I'm not entirely sure. It's just it's just interesting when you look at it. It's nothing really to look there, but it's just interesting to kind of get an understanding of why these people do what they do. And it kind of ties back to some of the stupid shit they say that. And stuff like Matt Lee's talking about cultural Marxism. That's like a whole other – I don't even understand that. No, no we want the non – talking about the Frankfurt School, that kind of stuff? <laughs> oh, but, well, look, the, the, these people – and like we're reading the stuff like the Mayo, the president of DIGRA right now, the Mayo stuff. And we're reading it out loud on my stream, and we're talking about how this stuff – the stuff they're saying was like cultural Marxism. It was stuff like we don't want – the gamers and gamers are dead. We want the non-gamers, and then it wasn't just them saying it. They're and like there was people like big companies talking about they want non-gamers. Yeah. Developers talking about they want the new gaming demographic, and it's like they want these people to make the choices, the decisions for people in gaming, but they don't like games. That's like that's like saying um uh that's like oh, making well, a horror. One, one sec, somebody said, "Have I done a stream with Sargon?" No, I haven't. Uh, but if he's out there and wants to join in, have him message me on uh, Twitter. Oh, I, I'll get him right now. He's on. He's a great guy to talk to, by the way. He's a really, really smart guy. And he's no, a, yeah, I watched his videos. I like his videos. He's an indie dev, by the way, too. I didn't know that. He was keeping it. He's, uh, he's an indie dev. I didn't, had no idea. But it's very interesting. Is he working on the hit sequel, Fez 2? Did he buy Polytron? Uh, no, he's working on a game that's kind of – it's like a – he'll explain. I'll let him, if he wants to talk about his game. Uh, it looks pretty cool. I'm excited for it. But – um. Hold on, let me see if I can message him real quick. I know he's on. He logged on and said hi to me. I just didn't uh, pay attention to my shit because I don't remember. Hey, there he is right there. He said, did you enjoy the Digra? <laughs> he's, he's asking me about the Digra stuff. He's like, as soon as he comes on, it's the first thing he starts talking about is more Digra because we've been looking at the stuff the whole time. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, I'm, I'm bleeding. Oh, put a Band-Aid on? I'm bleeding in chat, but you go ahead and do your thing. I'm I know, I know. I'm I'm sorry about that. Oh, okay. I'm an idiot. I'm sorry. Don't mind me. All right. Yeah, I'll go back to chat questions here. <laughs> yeah, Donald Duck, uh, or Dolan Duck. Yeah, Shrek caused the Holocaust. He traveled back in time and was uh, solely responsible for it. Uh, what do you think about uh, the finance capitalists meeting their goal? Uh, I figured they'd raise the money and be able to move forward and design the game. It seemed like they had a lot of support, so it doesn't surprise me. Uh, speaking on on the finding capitalists in the uh, is that what you're talking about the the Vivian Games game is that what it was? Yeah, somebody was asking about uh, uh, that meeting their goal. What uh, did anybody see Matt's response to Twitch TV banning Matt for talking about Gamergate on Twitch when he was showing off the game? Did anybody else see that when that happened? Just out of curiosity, chat. I just was wondering. And I saw that because I missed that, but he told me all about it. Oh uh, no, no, I didn't see that. I do. It was apparently he was streaming on Twitch TV, and he brought up Gamergate, and they banned him for that. And he was streaming, uh, talking about his game and stuff. And then he started talking about the Gamergate stuff that was going on, like we would normally do right now, or in my stream, or uh, in one of your videos or something. And then they banned him right afterwards. So I thought it was very. I, I haven't talked to him since then, but he just complained. He just bitched at me about it for a little bit. He was like, "These guys are dicks." And I was like, "I'm sorry." I don't know what to say, you know. <laughs> uh, hold on, one quick. One, I'm, I'm gonna get him in here. He wants the link, so uh, I don't. Where do I get the link? I, I'm uh, new to Twitter as well, so I have no idea how this shit works. Yeah, oh, there we on. go. Hold on. I got it. I got it. Sorry. Let me check my fucking privilege here. I think no. Is that the right one? I don't know if this is right. Maybe you know what? Just give me the link because right now I'm linking retarded shit, and I just got like 22 messages in my dump box. It's oh, here. Hold on. Hold on one second. Yeah, no problem. Yes, I am a shitlord. Absolutely. Uh... <laughs> All right, and then if you just want to copy and paste it, and then just send it to him via DM. There you go. It uh, should be the it should be the same link I sent you. It okay. Hold on. Let me see if it's working here. Cause it, like I copied it and then tried to give me like some Twitter thing. Maybe that's why. Let me see if I can open a new. T no. See. Hold on. Hold on one sec. Um... Oh, I got. I got it. I got it. I got it now. I just had to open it and then recopy it. It's just a pain in the ass. And then he's going to come in here in a second. Sorry. Sorry. What's your opinion on SJW Andrew thing after? He's not a social justice warrior. Listen, if you listen to the whiskey stream, okay, and the guy's first thing, they brought me on there to debate this guy. And the first shit right out the gate, okay, is I'm a social justice warrior, but I'm also a Nazi party member. 
and uh, ISIS did better things than than uh, than you know, Gamergate is doing. Okay, right off the bat, he says this, and the first thing me and Whiskey ask him is, "Are you trolling us?" And his next question response was, "Yes, I am trolling you. I'm trolling everyone in here, and the reason why is because I want to get by and make you guys take the bait so I can use it against you, uh, and and in different various means." As, you know, after so that, you, no you got in, you got trolled, is what you're saying, Andrew. What? Was a troll. The, the first Andrew, yeah, the Andrew guy, he uh, he came on, and that was what he said. So I immediately said, okay, that's all I need to hear. You're a troll. I mean, we want to get rid of him. But in, but the people, there was other people in the call and the debate. There was about 2,000 people watching the stream, and it wasn't on mine. It was on Whiskey's. Uh, and they started debating this guy soon afterwards, and he started jumping to, like, Anita, Sarkeesian, and Zoe Quinn and trying to make them relevant and, like, harassment, how he's a journalist, and just trolling even more. And then he kept mentioning how he was trolling them as they were talking to him. And I and then he kept calling everybody a sociopath. Like the chat was a sociopath, we were sociopaths. So I, I stopped him. I said, "Listen, are you are do you even understand what a sociopath is? I mean, you're talking to somebody who's a psychologist." And he stops. He's like, "I don't need to explain myself to you because you're a jackass." And I was like, "Okay, so your feelings are dictating things." And then I just cut him off. I was like, "Look, I'm out, guys. You know, just this is the kind of guy you want to avoid and block him on Twitter. Move on with your life and just walk the fuck out." But they debated him for another like hour and thirty minutes right after that, and I just I I left. I couldn't do that. There's no point. Uh, did somebody join? Uh, I don't know. I see. I gave somebody, it to Sargon. Somebody joined and left. I might have been Sargon. He got bad internet. Ah. Uh, I'll give him, give him the link again. Let me see if he'll try again. All right. While I, you're trying that, I'm gonna I'm gonna read through the chat here because it looks like ahead, they got to uh, let's see. Hi, uh, hi. A hedge fund kid is a plant-based jukin that lives in the forest and steals the gold from passing merchants. <laughs> <laughs> That's good old Paul. <laughs> Speaking of Paul, so I, I, I got emotes on my channel. The the head, Hitbox guys gave it to me, and I had the guys vote on it. And so I asked them if it was okay. So the emotes they picked were like the angry merchant guy, absolutely disgusting. I got George Zimmerman's face in one. Uh, someone tried to do Tyrone or, or Trayvon Martin. I, you guys, Dorner's one of them. You guys are fucking ridiculous. I don't even know how you got these passed, but you guys are fucking ridiculous. Chad. Well, what were you, what were you expecting with the name? <laughs> well, they voted on it. There's a couple Ebola Chan ones in there. It's like one of her, then a heart with Ebola wrapped around it. It's fucking ridiculous. I have no idea. These guys are fucking. They're crazy. Oh wait, I got some shit popping up on Steam. Let's see what they want. Uh. Fucking Dina. Are you a fan of the TV show Elf? <laughs> Who is your favorite character? Well, yes, Elf is a fantastic show. Um, and the father character would obviously be the best character on Elf. Uh, Jim Drew. That would be my answer to that. Is 8chan pulling a PR stunt, or is 4chan really kill? Is Moot a sellout SJW faggot? Um, like I said, I think Moot is looking to earn more venture capitalist money. That would be my guess on it. And he is being influenced by the people who would provide that money, at people that attended XOXO when he was there. Uh, hi, Jim. I'm mom on the radio. Okay. Uh, yo, can you play some Gauntlet? Not right now. Uh, somebody asked you about Dina. Look, listen, I asked Dina to come on my show to explain, and same with Rebecca Watson after that sh fucking video she uploaded. That that was like a whole other thing in itself. But... um. And Dina, Dina refused outright. She blocked me right off of the bat. She did. Yeah. And then uh, Rebecca Watson DM'd me, and I ended up being called a misogynist, uh, and uh, and was blocked right afterwards. So that was my response to her. At both of them asking them nicely if they would like to come on Friday to talk to me, an internet aristocrat, uh, about uh, their standings and why why things are happening in Mighty Number no. Nine and what's going on with that. And Rebecca Watson's. Standing well, in, like, in like I said, they're, they're fucking cowards. No, I, you're rarely going to get anybody to accept an invite on the it's other side. It's really hard. I, I'm not gonna lie. I got one, and that's that one guy that we're going to be coming on tomorrow. And he's he. I, I had it. It took me. I talked to him for four to five days straight, and before I at vetting him before I because I you know it's so hard. Like I, that's what I had to tell Whiskey with that one Andrew guy came on because he just brought him on just from a couple tweets. I said, look, you got to talk to these guys and really get some information and see where they're at because you, they might be just fucking with you the entire time. So it's just so hard. Like I've reached out to Matt Lees and I've reached out to Anita and, and all these other people and everybody who kind of stands to it, all the game journal pros on that list, all 150 of them reached out to and none of them really responded. I mean I've gotten a couple – I've gotten journalists here and there, but none of them that are anti-Gamergate. I think, I think only one or two actually want to speak. Most of them just block you outright and call you names. So, Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I, I know somebody in chat was asking about Dina. Listen, I, I did a video on her 
back nine or ten months ago when she got the gig as a community manager and artistic designer or whatever the fuck the extra title was for designing things, but not necessarily in the game, as she said. But it, it, she openly stated she doesn't play Mega Man games. She openly stated she got the job because she knows somebody. I remember getting a bunch of shit. Oh, nepotism is that happens everywhere. What's the big deal? <laughs> you're you're seeing the big deal now. She's fucking shitting over. Uh, she's shitting on people that basically financially supported the game, and are talking about Gamergate. It has nothing to do with Mighty Number no. Nine, but she's abusing her position as a community manager to block them from the official uh, Twitter account, kicking them off forums, doing the same fucking shit she was doing when she first got the job. And, you know, what I want to know is how nobody at that at concept has any idea that she's doing this. Like, they don't check the Twitter. I, I feel like they just let her run. Or Like, I can't imagine that they just let her run with, like, a leash. I mean, she's dating one of these guys, right? Isn't she? And she's, like, friends with these fucking guys. Yeah. They always eat lunch with them every day. So how do they not know? What is she just, like, uh, you know, maybe they, what, they don't fucking know English or something? It's so confusing. When I when I read the shit that she does and like the people raging, like that guy who got banned and he donated three hundred dollars and he was like, how how is this even irrelevant? And they won't give him a refund. It blows my mind and it really pisses me off. Um, and on a side note, Sargon said you have to add him to the hangout by looking up his name, uh, internet, which is Sar, Sar Sargon Avocado, all spaced out. So I don't know if you want me to spell it for you. Yeah, there's a chat feature. Here, let me open it up. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know shit about this, man. All right, look at the Google Hangout thing. Oh, hold on. Okay. <laughs> you mean two idiots, two idiots here who don't know shit about this stuff. Oh wait, or does uh, that put that? Oh, that might. I have tried to put uh, a. Can, how do I type in this? How do I, oh, like, we, oh, I okay, like all right, all right. Over. Um, movie, <laughs> yeah. Do you have the Google Hangouts window open? Um, you know what? Here we go. I got it. I got it. Hold on. No, I closed it. Now, where's the video at? Where's the the pop? Oh, pop yeah, that just, thing up again. just just DM me his name on Twitter, and I'll add him. Okay. Jesus. This is uh, I'm sorry, I'm like I'm not uh, I'm not savvy. Not savvy uh, at all. all right, let's see. Uh, Conce or Comcept's PR knows they just don't really give a shit. Yeah, Comcept. Uh, listen, when that video first, when I did the Dina video, I got a message from somebody who uh, essentially said, or people at Capcom had seen it and were laughing because uh, they thought it was funny. Like the idea that you know, oh, we're gonna make a spiritual spiritual successor to Mega Man, and it got fucked right out of the gates. So. It's just it's bad PR for the company. It's bad PR like it was bad PR for um, for uh, Gearbox with the way Birch is behaving. I, these people shouldn't be associated with these companies. They're hurting a brand by behaving the way they do. But it was, isn't it also that the fact that the people who actually got the beta now they're saying that it's not even a Mega Man game that it doesn't even to feel like a Mega Man game that it's too easy and casual. I mean you know yeah. you fucked up if you come out if you're trying to make a game and you're saying this game is going to be exactly like. Like a Mega Man. This is a Mega Man game, and then people are telling you the first main problem is it's not a Mega Man game. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna try to add him now. Okay, go ahead. I'll just uh, read. You. Look up "Never Change Japan" on YouTube. Okay. Uh, can cause be saved? I, you know what? I, I talked about this with this with the group. They were asking me psychologically, uh, how do you explain these people? And I and I had to explain to them the bar, the the psycho bar. The, the psych bar that we use, where it's like when you testing somebody, uh, somebody's wherewithal on things, you would set, you would say the most distraught thing that would set them off, and then you would go gauge it by lowering down on what you're saying to them and watching the reaction. Eventually, when they get to a point where they're comfortable, then you know that's where their comfort zone is. And and uh, in my opinion, I think that social justice warriors have almost no comfort zone or no bottom at all. And when there's no bottom at all, uh, you, you're talking about people who are unhinged at that point. There there's some mentally unstable. And they and they don't really realize it. And most crazy people won't know that they're crazy. So that's something you nearly need to understand. Uh, somebody who's really sick, uh, mentally un unstable at the time, and things are going on with them, they don't know for the most part because acceptance is something that it comes in with the reality of you have something wrong with you. So they won't think they're crazy. And then paranoid delusion sets in. It's 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 literally a fucking it's crazy, bro. Oh, I, okay. psycho boy. I I sent him an invite, so I, I hope that okay. went. Through. So it's just a little bit for you, chat. Like I blew some minds. I, I was doing what's called the t the tape uh, uh, the tap test, and the tap test is very interesting too on some people because they wanted to see what I was talking about, and I gave a prime example with that. Which if you guys ever are bored and you want to fuck with your friends, get a random picture, uh, just a picture. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, it could be anything, um, and uh, tell them to write a story or to look at the picture and tell a story. About what's going on in that picture, like just with, without giving them any information, they can be whatever they want, and then do that with like two other people, and and they will never be the same story. No one has the same exact story, and the reason why is because they project the things that's going on with them 
or at, at any – like everybody projects a certain amount. They'll project things into these pictures, and they'll do things. They'll say things that will make sense to them, and you can read the person or what kind of person they are or what they're going through with their thoughts. So it's 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 oh, one, uh, one one sec. I got some questions coming through. Uh, what happened with Pit, Pitchford on Twitter? Uh, I I got into a discussion with him because he was somebody had asked something and Pitchford had called the guy a coward for not wanting to reveal his real name and address. And so I'd asked Pitchford if he was so brave, why not comment on what his employees were saying, which was Anthony Birch making statements that there were connections to different gaming websites. Uh, you know, he made allegations. He essentially alluded to the fact that IGN is bought and paid for. I know it's a big joke, but he publicly declared that. Um, he also made allegations that you know Gearbox games get good reviews on Destructoid because he, you know, his relationship with the site owner and the history he had there and the people he knows there. And so I wanted to know what Birch's response was. And Birch, his response to that was uh, essentially, "Who cares?" He said, "Who cares? Uh, what what games have you ever bought off a false review? I don't care." is basically what his fucking response was. And then he ended up deleting all of that after he got off his never-ending fucking plane ride. Because apparently he couldn't he couldn't discuss that anymore. He was on a plane. And then he landed and, I guess, deleted all those tweets. But uh, take my advice, Gearbox. You don't want bad PR, and Birch is giving you bad PR with the fucking mouth on him. Don't be silly. He's still flying in that plane, man. Come on, now. Uh, all right, going. so do we get the right guy here? Or is it, yeah, this is, this is Saga. Uh, you got me, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. Can you hear me, guys? Yep, can hear yep. you. Grand. How are you all doing? Good, just, man. Doing good. <clears throat> we were uh, talking about the, uh, the the Mayo thing and the Digro earlier, uh, just a little bit of it, and the and the hedge fund babies, the discussion of that one that we yeah. looked into with the ancestry <laughs> shit we were doing. Oh my god. But, yeah, a bunch of fucking rich kids. Can you believe it? <laughs> you, you know what? It, you know what it reminds me of? Uh, who are those two? It was a bunch of rich kids. This is from like the 1920s. They were very well off. They were very affluent, and they decided they just wanted to kill somebody to see if they could get away with it. That's what it kind of reminds me of. Oh, yeah. Probably. No, no, I've heard of that. I've heard of that. I... They, they were like very, very high, you know, standing, wealthy families that were established. Um, they wore oh, fuck. There was a movie about it where they wore like owl masks and shit. Let me see if I can. Find I know it. exactly what you're talking about. These guys were one of the first. Well, they were back then. They were considered serial killers in their own sense, but when they were caught, they they had. And oh, Leah, Le yeah, Leopold and Loeb, Chicago's yep. Thrill Colors. Yep. It's looking out now. But that's that's what it reminds me of when you're talking like hedge fund babies, when you're talking about that kind of stuff. It's these rich kids that are disconnected with the real world, again, and want to uh, invent oppression and hate mommy and daddy but right. will live off their money. Well, I mean, it's it's that and then the stuff that they talk about. Like like I said, it's like this cultural Marxism stuff that they start talking about and pushing. That's what it seems like they talk about at least. And and then when you ask them about it, it just they don't they don't really understand what the hell they're saying. So it, it makes me wonder if they even understand what they're promoting. Oh, as for my somebody's asking, what are my thoughts on uh, Thunderfoot getting banned on Twitter? I think it's bullshit. He, there's no reason he should be banned on Twitter. It's there's no fucking reason he should be. It's absolute crap. Uh, he obviously got bombed by false reports, and he never posted anything that was anywhere near being um, against the terms of service. Are they ever going to lift that, or is he still is he still locked down? Uh, I don't know. I know he did a video addressing it, but he was obviously doing other shit, so he didn't. He, he couldn't afford, uh, from what he was saying, the experiments were expensive to you know fuck about with it too much. But right. I don't know if they've lifted it yet or not. But there's no reason he should have been banned. That's complete fucking bullshit. What are your thoughts on Carmack's response to the gender gap? Uh, base Carmack, I think that he was absolutely fucking right, in my opinion. I, I agree. I, I think he stated the reality of it. It's not that they're okay. denying women positions. It's just women aren't applying. They're looking for the best person. That's all. Why? That's. I don't get that about social justice warriors. Why do they hate the idea of merit? Why should the person who is most qualified for the job not get it just because they're male or they're white or they're straight? Oh, you that's know? easy. <laughs> That's easy. That's because they don't have any fucking merit, and they know it. They all study gender studies and whatever, and that means they've got no practical skills, they've got no real-world applications, so now they have to whinge their way into whatever it is they're trying to do. Is, is this, uh, is this the con going to delve into that conversation where you talk to me about the bead store? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, I can tell everyone about the bead store. <laughs> Go ahead. I'd love to hear I, it. <laughs> A couple of years ago, I visited uh, my, my sister, who is a, a devout feminist, uh, in Bristol. And it must, you know, must have been a lovely trip. It, no, no, no. It, 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 they're, they're not, they weren't 
I mean, this was like 2008, probably. In fact, it was good for years ago now. But it, well, no, no, it probably wasn't that long ago. But it was, you know, when when, I, when you know when the economic crisis was happening, and I I was at cash point and I turned around and in front of me there were two shops. One was like a hardware shop or something like that, and the other one was a bead store. And the hardware shop had closed down because it had gone out of business. And the bead store had people coming and going in and out of it. <laughs> and I was just like, what kind of fucking town supports a bead store? That's all it sold. Just beads. Colored beads. Apparently they, they liked making shitty, tacky jewelry, I guess. <laughs> That's a bit popular. It's just, oh, good God, what kind of economy do these people work on? <laughs> good God. Well, to be to be fair, you really you know once you buy a hammer, you're pretty much set for life. But uh, I guess those beads are such low quality; you need to buy them every fucking day. Uh, somebody wants to know I, your thoughts on the Sarkeesian effect. Uh, yeah, people have asked me about that a bunch of times. Listen, if they want to make a documentary and dig into it, why not? Uh, they got in both you know uh, Jared or uh, uh, Owen and Arini got a lot of shit for even talking about wanting to do that. Again, it was blowback. How dare you even want to look into that? Hmm. Anything that's treated as a sacred cow should have its shit examined. That's my opinion on it. So when people say, oh, you can't make a documentary about Anita Sarkeesian, how dare you? But then I want to see the fucking documentary. You know what I mean? It's all the more reason to do it. Absolutely. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did, what, what do you guys, um, did you guys want to know anything about uh, what I have found out about Digra? So I'm going to be, oh, um, yes, absolutely. I'm going to be doing a video about it um, tomorrow, actually. Yeah, if you want to share, man, go ahead. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, um, ba basically, it was founded in, like, 2002 by people who were proper academics. You know, they weren't gender ideologues. Mm -hmm. And you can see that around 2006, uh, it's a surprisingly old institution, and around 2006, feminists started infiltrating it and now it's dominated by feminists they they are all dyed in the wool man hating feminists see i really um, wish you had said two, or 2007 cuz that would have been the most spectacularly perfect timing well well actually i say 2006 but that was just um let me just uh, get a link up hang on let me just check something because um, if you can tie this into bazinga that's going to be fucking great I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually not familiar with what that is, but I tell you what, if you can give me some names... Oh, no, no, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, there's this little um, image macro that goes around where it's, you know, lol nerds in their video games from, like, 1986 all the way up till 2007 where women start to, like, feminists start to infiltrate gaming. And oh. in the thread, somebody was like, what happened in 2007? And somebody's like, when did Big Bang Theory start to air? And it was in 2007. So it's referring to Sheldon Cooper uh, making what? that Bazinga joke. Right, okay, I wasn't aware of that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that 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 image has been around everywhere. So that's why I was saying if you could have tied it in, that would have been great. Well, it, it would probably would have made more sense in 2006. What you were saying, what were they rap? Were they just getting into it in 2006? So again, yeah. is that what you said? So I mean, maybe in 2007, that's probably when the foothold was actually starting. You you're probably starting to see it. Right. It, it, so it just goes back to again, they co-op shit. So you're yeah. saying it was started by proper academics, and so this group yeah. comes along and sees it, and they co-opt it and fucking shit it up. Yeah, I, I, I can I can prove beyond a shadow of a doubt. I mean, all of these people um, did things like you know they they they've they've all got their CVs online because they don't realize that there are people who think they're you know what they are, and so they, they, you know they, they openly say that they studied feminism and gender studies as a minor or you know as a major and all this sort of stuff, and they've written various papers about gender and feminism and and it and it, it's all in relation to gaming. So it, it's so easy to see just what's happened and you can tell, I mean there are some fruitcakes on there as well, there are some like uh, there's this one guy who's absolutely obsessed with sustainability and everything, everything he does has the word sustainability in it and it's just like, right, okay, he's just an ideologue of another stripe, you know <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sorry, let me just let me just find this thing a minute and um yeah, see, exactly so, so they, they did to digger what they've done to everything else. They they fucking oh. got in and they used it as a shield for their bullshit profiteering and their bullshit philosophy. And I bet you the people that were were the people that were originally connected with it, the founders in two thousand two, have they distanced themselves from that at all? Oh yeah. The the, the way that the uh, Digra board works, the executive board of Digra, it's by voting. 
Oh god, they got voted out of their own fucking organization? I yeah. think they may have done. So, so it's think, Occupy Wall it's... Street, the fucking organization, is what this I'm, is. I'm, yeah. I'm not joking, right? Yeah, Tanya Kruinska or something. Are you talking about, is that the president, Sargon, that we were looking into that we talked yeah. about we tried to contact? Well, not not well. They, they've had a couple. In 2006, it was Franz Mayara or something, some guy from Finland, um, and he he's he's like a gaming academic. I mean, he 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 has an article or a paper where he talks about diversity of games, and you think, oh god, you know, this guy's a he was one of them. But he's actually talking about game types, you know, like chess, Dungeons and Dragons, Quake, you know, all that sort of thing. That that to me is what you would be talking about when you're talking about diversity in games, you know. Um, but the, then he, in 2006, is voted out. And in 2007, Tanya Kruinska's in there. And she's a proper gender ideologue. She's absolutely dyed in the wool. And then you can just see, like, the numbers of them grow. And you can, like, Esther McCallum Stewart, right? In 2007, she joins. Uh, no, sorry, in 2006, she joins. And she's just on, you know, an open seat. She's nobody. Um, 2007, she's a nobody. And then in 2010, she's the vice president. You know, and so I think, and and you can just honestly, I, I'm gonna, I'll do the video on it tomorrow so everyone can see just exactly. Oh yeah, yeah, because I want to watch that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 by current day, you've got Mia Consalvo, Ashley Brown, um, Anika Warren, uh, Rachel Cower, Hannah Weirman, um, Lindsay Grace, and Jessica Weber, and who are all absolute feminists, died in the feminists, and that's out of eleven people. You know, so more than half of them. So that's voting power, probably. I would so, say so. Yeah. You can, you can exactly see how these people exactly as you say they they just join something they I imagine they sweet talk their way in because these guys aren't particularly um handsome guys and I don't really <laughs> think that um I don't really think they're I I think there's definitely um they they're playing on their gender these women I think they really think they are I mean I can't prove that obviously that's entirely conjectural but right but I, I, I mean I think I've met these type of people before you know. Right, but I mean, I, th I think it plays into a common flaw with academia, is there you've got intelligent people that aren't street smart. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So they, they, they're they mm. so focused on what they're researching, and they're so focused on the ideas that they're exploring, they don't understand that they're getting fucked, essentially, in the way yeah. they're getting fucked until it's already happened. Is that is that why we have Common Core? I Please tell me. Don't, don't even get me started on that fucking <laughs> bomb. I showed Sargon the video of the guy who's like, oh my well, you guys have too much white privilege, so that's why we have Common Core. <laughs> Did you hear him get booed? Yeah, dude, I'm so, that, was, that made me so happy. It made me feel a little bit good inside that there were still people left with, with insanity. Well, did you see the other one, too, the White Privilege Conference they've been doing in Madison for 15 years? What? Oh, yeah, the one where they, had, like, where they were indoctrinating like children at the age of fucking like, six? Yeah, it, it was kindergarten? Straight, up, straight up propaganda. It Is that people. the one where it uh, said, if you have privilege, then you are white? Yes. 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 <laughs> have you seen that, Sargon? They like they have these kids yeah. writing stories, and then they'd stand up and they start fucking reading their stories about like white. They have no idea what the fuck they're talking about. They're kids. Yeah. What, what's a kid gonna know about fucking gender? All, all you're all you're doing is like breeding a new type of uh, a new type of supremacist or or a uh, new type of uh, prejudice in that in that aspect. Like, these kids are gonna grow up and think that white people are bad or or this color is better than this color. I mean, I really is that what I thought we got far out of that during the Civil Rights Act. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is well, you've got to understand like how this plays into politics too. Um, look at, uh, I believe, if yeah, if you go look it up, it's from January eighth, twenty fourteen. Go look up Obama administration guidelines that could lead to racial quotas in school discipline. Jesus Christ! No, no, no. This is a philosophy saying that uh, they looked at the numbers and they said, why is it that we have minority uh, students getting suspended from school so much? And instead of saying that maybe it's a socioeconomic issue, maybe it's just that those kids happen to be misbehaving, they decided that it was racist. And so they want to create quotas so that you cannot suspend a certain amount of... Yeah, it has to be equal. Equal amounts of black and white get in suspended. <laughs> God, we're one step behind Sweden, I swear. Um, get ready for it, Sweden, yes. Uh, somebody linked me this. Uh, a new UN report on, uh, on from the, I guess, the Kutaku in action stuff. And the UN is saying that moral fairness... Can be easily disposed of. I, I don't know. What? I haven't read this. I have no idea. I haven't read this. Somebody link it. Somebody linked it in here, and then they, they tweeted it to me, you and uh, and Sargon here to say look at this. Oh, uh, UN report on social justice, top page three. Present day believers in an absolute truth identify the virtue and justice are neither willing nor desirable companions for the defenders of social justice. Right. So they don't want to be related to truth or honesty or any of that shit. 
Um, no. Too long didn't read. Raw uh, royal theories theory of justice dictates that wealth be distributed so that the on the bot those on the bottom are helped the most, which doesn't imply complete equity in distribution. Some economists believe wealth inequality is better, while others argue that complete equality is better, and there is nothing resembling a consensus. There has been a great outcomes on equal rights, but social justice is about equality of outcomes, which means you can't treat everyone the same. You have to take opt- uh, that take you have to take oh, opportunity see, away. Fuck, fuck that shit. The quality of outcomes. It's a quality of opportunity. You give everybody a fair shot at right. achieving something. You don't guarantee them the outcome. That's nanny state bullshit. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's fucking it's, no, no, it's the, putting the cart before the horse, you know. And, it is. Oh. Yeah. I've got um. By the way, you know that they're aware of what we're doing, aren't you? Are you talking about the videos, the streams? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're fully aware. In fact, I, um, go ahead, go ahead. The, the, yeah, the, there's someone called um Torin Mortensen, a uh, Toril Mortensen, sorry. Mm-hmm. And on the 11th of September, she wrote an article on her personal. Uh, thing, which is uh, torilsin.blogspot.uk right. uh, where she talks about Gamergate. And she claims that she's still a gamer and all this sort of thing. But at the end of it, she says, as a special mention, I found myself sur- I find myself surrounded by Frankfurt School followers, which is a link to my video about uh, the Diagra yeah. conference. Uh, you know, and the very suspicious Diagra and feminist present feminist professors and bloggers that are out to get their games. She's being a sarcastic twat, but right. this is all true. <laughs> There's a there okay, so I have I've been getting emails since the beginning of this and I've and I've been doxxed twice now and it's and I'm assuming every time the email will come to me, the guy's claiming that they're Kutaku writers. I don't know if they are, they're claiming. They're saying it's a dump email Kutaku you're, you're, writers. You're being you's being fucked with again by a third party that's out for laughs. Uh, that's just right. right. Yeah. Right, so they, that's that's my answer. They'll they'll link one type of docs, and then by the end of my stream, they'll drop it in chat, right? And then one of them said they're going to write an article on me, uh, and I and then people found when they docked me the first time, it was like some uh, old dating website that I used, and I put on there, do I want kids? No, and so everybody started saying I hate children, right? Oh, that's then, where that came from. Okay. Yeah, that's where that's where I hate children came from because I got doxed on my stream, and then one of the anti gamergate guys came in and doxed it, saying he was a Kutaku writer. And then he doxed me. So he drops the, the, that in there, and then that's where everybody starts saying, I hate children. And, um, and then uh, after that, somebody was asking about, like, Hitler and stuff like that, and, like, is there anywhere they can go watch stuff? And so I, I brought that up, and then I was, like, I got an email that same night saying, well, uh, it said, uh, we're going to make an article on you about not, Nazism and stuff like that. And somebody, I know somebody in this chat's going to know what I'm talking about. The next day, an article came out talking about Gamergate and Nazi-related tendencies immediately. <laughs> I mean, who's somebody find that article? It's it's out there. It's something about like Nazism and Gamergate. Somebody. It was like the next day after the stream because I uploaded the stream and everything, and I was like, okay, there there is there's, somebody's pulling my chain, or they were watching the stream, and they were talk when we ended the stream, and I was talking to them about Nazi Germany stuff, and and now and Nazism versus Gamergate related stuff. It, it, I swear, and don't forget, I hate Australians. Thanks, guys. So, oh, oh, well, yeah, we we've established that. We all know your raging hatred for Australians. I, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had one Australian on my stream, and Sargon was in their call, and that was after the debate with the Cause guy, uh, which you'll be talking to tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, and uh, he was a fucking—I have to admit—he he was a, a big troll. I had to remove him pretty quick. What Cause? No, no, no. The guy after him—that the, that Australian guy we brought in that want to talk. And oh he was yeah. Just like, I got a, <laughs> yeah, I got a 35-inch cock, and I'll fight all of the straight. <laughs> like immediately, that's what he comes into this the, the channel with, and he's like, "Fuck everyone!" And I just had to kick him out. It's it too much. See, that's why I love Aussies. They're they're great at that kind of shit. <laughs> As he came in, he's like, "Hey, my name's this, and I'm I'm this on Gamergate, and I have a 35-inch cock. I like long walks on the beach." I was like, "What is that timeout?" It's too silly. So, Sargon, has anybody threatened to uh, dox you yet? No, I think they're kind of scared of me, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's right, man. They better there, be. There's, I, I, I'm, I'm entirely uh, funded by my YouTube channel and my patrons on Patreon, who don't just give me money per month. They give me money per fucking video so I can prove I've done some work. So when are you, when are you going to start making 30-second videos every day, four or five <laughs> times a day? <laughs> Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that, that's the thing. I don't. They 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 really give me a wide berth, um, and I'm I'm kind of disappointed to be honest. I don't feel like oh. I've made it until I've been doxxed. Thank you, Chad. Somebody found that article about the gamers that came out the next day with the Nazis. I'm sorry, I just had to go about it. They put it in. Was the that chat. was that actually on Kotaku? Uh, what, who was it on? I don't think it was Kotaku. Which one was it? It was one of it's uh, thoughtcatalog.com. 
Uh, gamers are Nazis. You need to stop hating on women. That was what that's that's the article that came out the <laughs> immediately the next day after my stream, and it started talking about Gamergate and how it's related to Nazism. Now, I oh, was hang like, on, hang on, hang on, hang uh, on. Nazis yeah. didn't hate women. I don't. They didn't. <laughs> they no, they did, absolutely they didn't. They were they were all for, no, no, no. I'm a history guy. They they were all for you know perfect Aryan German women who were gonna read the master. Race. Oh wait, wait. It was on thought catalog by Angus. Oh, you're getting fucked with by Miz. Why? Why? That's that's okay. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> no, 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 really, that's, yeah, don't even worry about it, yeah. Okay, all right, I'm just saying, that came out right afterwards, and people started tweeting that to me, they're like, hey, remember you talking about Nazis, just thought I should just give this to you, this came out like four hours, or like, like ten hours after your, your stream, and Gamergate Nazis, you know, it's like... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're just having fun, yeah, I, I don't think, and that wasn't the person that doxed you either, they're just, yeah, they're taking the piss out of you. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, and I, I think I know what you're talking about. Sorry, you're talking about wait, they would have the marches and they would have the women go to the camps and they'd all come back yeah. pregnant and stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, the, the Nazis were well into women. They were. They thought women were the the, the backbone of Germany. You know, and they were. I suppose. I mean, but uh, yeah, we're we're way worse than the Nazis, guys. You know? Yeah, you were. You didn't, you didn't figure out that uh, thought catalog. It's Angus, Angus, Angus. Oh, uh, I don't know. I like oh it's satire okay that's why thank you for fucking with me guys because that's what people were linking to me the next day they're like they wrote an article on you bro and I was like oh, okay thank you oh yeah that's that person's put some of the funniest shit up and if you go by the Miz board you'll you'll see what okay. I'm talking about it's really good uh, stuff okay I'll have to go read it I never read the article I just saw the title and people said it had it had it was talking about Nazism and me hating children and I was like I'm done I right, I'll walk away from that. <laughs> Yeah, don't worry about that sort of shit, man. It's, it's uh, a, what is this? It's people want to be fat of taco. Um, I can bring. Oh, why short fat otaku wants on? I'm just looking through the chat. I got caught up in the conversation. That was uh, indefeasible. I was um, the oh, people okay. put that up on their channel. Um, how do I do this? What's your YouTube name? Somebody type out the YouTube name exactly as it is then. Um, Sorgan, did we did we ever get anywhere with the patron stuff? Because I left, and same with that. And did you hear about the archive stuff that was going on last night? I was investigating with Monday and Matt, and uh, and then Rogue went on his own little tangent, and I couldn't we couldn't figure it out after that. Um, I've got an awful lot of stuff. Um, so you're gonna have to be a bit more specific than that, I'm afraid. Um, okay. So the last night, uh. Rogue and was it this guy a fart a fart or was a movie Bob or fart I don't and some guy missing Mr Fart or a movie Bob one of the two and Rogue right. were going back in the archive stuff and they were claiming that uh, people uh, somebody was ordering like well like massive amounts of stuff from IGF and Silverstring uh, stuff from all the way back from 2009 to now were being deleted from the Wave Way Back machine on the Wave Way Back machine in big, massive bulks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Like, we started looking into it. Me and Monday and Matt were trying to help him, and then Rogue went off on his own tangent, and, like, he came in the group, you know, our little group we were in before, that public group, and mm. uh, was trying to get all of us into it. But it just, it was like, it was half confirmed, and then people would take it back saying, oh, no, no, it's bullshit. I, I'm not entirely sure what happened with it. I gave up because it was, I just felt too stupid. Yeah, well, if it. we don't know, we don't know. But um, I know that Silverstring did remove their team page from their website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I've got screenshots of the original. Uh, they took the yeah, COO yeah. off first, or CCO off first, and then they again did a second uh, update where they removed everything, really. Yeah, and then even the existence of the team page from like the menu structure and all that sort of thing. And it's just like, well, you know, guys, if if you th if we're investigating you and you guys start doing stuff like that, then we know you're hiding something. Right. <laughs> yeah, How makes stupid do you think we are? You know. <laughs> what? Why does everybody keep wanting me to talk to Movie Bob? What is? It, what's up with this guy? I don't I have no idea. Oh, oh yeah, he'll, he'll try to get you arrested because he doesn't like your opinion. <laughs> like, I'm I'm not, what? What? He tried to get you arrested or something? What's going he on? He tried to get a teenage boy arrested in the UK because he made a video about trolling people in WoW, and I'm not joking. He wanted him arrested for hate speech. I mean, are you, are you serious? Is there like a link to this or something so I can? Yeah, I. I I argued with him. I hate it. Sounds gay even saying this, but I argued with him on Twitter. I'll give you the. I'll, I will post the picture again so you can see. Gay. I guess the person that started it was Patricia Hernandez. She picked oh on this kid. Oh my god! No, yeah, she picked on this kid who had a channel with about 200 subs. She picked on him because he was small and because she thought he'd be weak. And um, she wrote an article <laughs> saying he was the worst person in the world. And Movie Bob jumped on it and started having discussions with Jim Sterling on Twitter about getting uh, this kid arrested. Now, to his credit, Jim Sterling wasn't the one saying, let's get the kid arrested. That was fucking movie, Bob. <laughs> He's awful. He, he is so fucking awful, and he doesn't seem to realize you how know, awful he is. 
I, I just I, I, why? What the fuck is the point? Who cares? You, you have a YouTube severe yourself. emotional damage. What the oh. fuck is wrong with you? It's a kid. There's a, there's a, there's a quote of his going around um, that um, something like, "If high school wasn't hell for you, then you're the reason it's hell." I'm thinking, well, shit, I was just playing Dungeons and Dragons all through high school. So, <laughs> what was I doing to Movie Bob? But he's he's but he was obviously bullied badly at school because he's fat and fucking useless. And okay, uh, I'm I'm posting the uh, Movie Bob thing again. I put it up on Imager. So, um, okay, <laughs> if you go if you look on Twitter, that'll be there. That's this is the picture. Of, uh, where, this is, where, where are you posting it at? So I it's on. See. It's on Twitter. Go take okay. a look. I just, okay. I literally just put it up, and it's an imager. It shows exactly what happened. Okay. All right. Let me go look in here. Um, I, if you, the the bottom's the most important part. It's Movie Babu said this. Uh, just to clarify, the discussion that took place on Twitter was less about whether or not I thought anyone, or, or whether or not I thought he deserved to be arrested, and more about the fact that since the video maker in question was operating out of Europe, North Ireland specifically. His actions may actually be in violation of either local or EU laws against cyberbullying or encouraging the same. So not only did this asshole start talking... It, it, listen, he was trying to throw his weight around <laughs> to uh, scare the kid. And on top of that, he's mentioning where he lives, North Ireland specifically. How about fuck you, Bob? How about maybe not pick on a teenage boy as a big bad game journalist with Patricia Hernandez? You fucking unscrupulous piece of shit. This, this, okay, this kind of reminds me of an incident I had a long time really ago. I, I have a, I have kids that um I, I have a group of game you know everybody plays games you got friends you play with games and stuff and they bring their little friends on and stuff on Teamspeak whatever you use and uh, I have a third there was like this kid that was like thirteen at the time and I guess he was like trying to get away from I don't know like these gaming communities and stuff like that and something and the guy who ran it was like an ex veteran forty year old guy and he went to four chan on B and he docks the kid uh, because the kid asked to be unbanned I guess on his on his servers I, I'm not entirely sure what's going on. So I did say something. I was just like, that's kind of messed up, man. And then the guy went back and doxed me and then called my work and said that I was a pedophile, child pedophile, uh, and then I had child porn on my computer, which it entailed me to have to go into work and bring my laptop in. And I, so I've, I've dealt with something like that. Uh, it was very interesting. I, I just don't get people like that. But I don't know. Oh, I put the – okay. I couldn't post it in chat. I put the movie bog – or bog. Movie Bob uh, Immigr pick in the – it should be underneath the stream in the description. If you click on that, if chat wants to look at it, uh, there you go. Also, Short Fatataka, you said you wanted to come on. I sent an invite through Google. Um, you have to get it through your YouTube channel. It should show up in notifications. Uh, I'm going to go through my Twitter because people are linking me all this information stuff again. Um, what is this? Oh, Donkey Kong, okay. But shit, well, how old is this, by the way? Um, when did you post this? So this was January of last year. I mean, these people have been doing this shit for years. Uh, it, it just, Patricia went after this kid because he was small. Bob jumped on the bandwagon for SJW points and tries to downplay it like it's not a big deal. It right. is a big deal. Listen, I, I'm an asshole. I've done terrible shit. I, I make horrible jokes on the internet, but I'm not the guy trying to project uh, the image of being this, you know, upright, uh, upstanding person who's, you know, morally and ethically superior to everybody. I'm not the guy saying I'm a journalist. You are, Bob. Uh, so what? <laughs> just try to act the fucking part is what I am guess I'm it's saying. It's the problem with progressivism, man. The ends justify the means. You know, so if they have to be complete twats to 15-year-old boys in Northern Ireland to somehow establish their progressive narrative and hegemony over whatever there is they're trying to get, then they'll do it. You know, unscrupulous. That's the problem. Oh, and you know the killer part too is. Uh, hold on, I want to. I don't want to misquote him, so I'm going to read this verbatim because it's. It, it, hold on, Bob. Where the fuck did you say this? Because okay, you remember in the uh, the thing that I posted, how he said I didn't try to get him arrested. I was just talking about if you could get him arrested, right? What? He said wow. he said he went on to say this on Twitter when I was talking to him about it. Shrug. If I see someone doing something wrong and I think maybe there's a law against it, a thing I consider doing is informing the police. So he's trying to like he's backpedaling. <laughs> he, he states it outright on Twitter. Yeah, I wanted the kid to get arrested. So fuck off, Bob. Trying to play it both sides and act like that wasn't what you were doing. <laughs> You just fucking said it on September 23rd that, yeah, you thought it was illegal, and yeah, you would like to talk to the police about it. Because the kid trolled somebody in WoW. Are you fucking kidding me? It's fucking disgusting, man. It's absolutely disgusting. 
Well, I mean, how, how do these people react to my gut? How do these people react to any group out there that organizes trolling and fucking video games? You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it, I mean, look at all the my gut videos, like you said. Uh, what is it? Crush a can for fucking, what is it, Jim or something like that? I can't remember the guy, the kid's name. Anybody might know what I'm talking about. They did, like, the thing where they go around and harass Crush these fucking women. Crush a can for yeah. That's it. That's it. There we go. You got those, that kind of, I mean, they do crazy shit all the time. But they don't ever. They don't ever go after those kind of people. There was, wasn't there like a group of like, speaking WoW related? They were a long time ago. There was like a WoW guild where they went and like ganked all these people who were having like a real internet fucking uh, funeral for a guy who died in real life or something. Does any, did anybody ever see that video? I, I don't know. But it's like shit like that, and they don't fuck with that, but they fuck with a kid. I, I don't get it. All right, uh, short fat otaku. I'm sending again. Um, oh, let's see. All right, invitation posted. Oh, sorry to interrupt, but yeah, it's part of what gaming is. Listen, I, I get trolled all the fucking time. I, I play Ace of Spades because I'm fucking autistic, and the shitty Steam version, not the good version either. And people come in all the time and spam grenades and fucking knock your shit down. That's just part of the game. Oh, God. Um... Uh, what is this? Uh, your face when I is secretly a pull shit poster? I'm not secret about it. I like pull, and I shit post a lot. That's part of... Like, I have the V mentality, and I like the pull content. It's a terrible combination. I can just see it now, because I go to pull regularly. I can just see the kind of fucking posts you make now, now that you say that. <laughs> God, no. Crush a can, people are saying. I already did. In my first fucking live stream, somebody said crush a can for J. Owen, and I fucking crushed one. You can hear it in the audio. I don't have a webcam, so I can't, I can't show it to you. Which hurts, by the way. It's not a fucking pleasant sensation. But I'm not going to deny a poor little kid with cancer his one dying request. I'm not an asshole. Maybe Movie Bob should crush a can for J. Owen. Maybe if oh. he's such an upstanding guy, he should do that. You know, actually, I, never, I don't think I ever really got to ask you, uh, uh, Jim. If you did, you what did you think about the 150 journalists that came out and the whole like uh, Kyle Orland, Ben Kuchera thing coming out talking about? Oh yes, you know, we're we're proud of this fucking. Gag. Uh, Google group and and how we're running things here and you better keep your mouth shut. Don't talk about Fight Club. It, it's arrogance again. These people, l like I said, look at look at the information you guys have dug up or Short Fat Attack or Camera Later, right. anybody else that's looked into it. These people are that full of themselves that they think they can't get caught and they've dragged their ass across the entirety of the internet, leaving a trail that anybody could fucking follow. Um, of course, they're proud about it. They don't think they've done anything wrong. They're just. They're just so fucking smug at the end of the day is what really, I think, irks me the most. I it's think like they're never also not very bright people. either. What's um, that? I, d I don't think they're very bright either. Um, one of the things I've been doing in this guy, uh, Digro research is that they, they, they use such childish and infantile language. They, they don't write well. You know, they, the academics, their, their papers read like academic papers, but the ideologues, their papers read like they were written by teenagers. Mm. You know, and it's it's just like these these people don't really seem to be very intelligent. Oh, uh, one sec. Um, people are asking, do you go to 4chan or 8chan? I like poll and V on 4chan, but with the way Moot's behaving, I've been posting and browsing 8chan. I go to 8chan's V. I go to 8chan's poll. I go to 8chan's GG board. That's where I go. Oh, um, just... That's that's just where I'm going right now because I'm pissed off at the way Moot's behaving. Uh, speaking uh, off topic, just to talk about something poll related, what did you think about like uh, America launching all those fucking missiles at ISIS all in one day, <laughs> that and then watching it on live stream? Did you watch that actually on the live stream? Oh, I didn't have a chance to. I've been oh, so my swamped with God. allegations. It look. You remember the Baghdad thing when they invaded Baghdad? You can watch that on live stream. The the back back when we uh, in the Iraqi war. Who was the guy that was doing PR for Iraq? Uh, what was it? Baghdad. What was his name? He I was a guy. That he would go on TV and say, we're not being invaded as bombs are exploding behind him. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know. I don't oh, know. I would... the minister of information. Yeah, yeah. You know what? That, that's the perfect parallel for fucking Gamergate. That's, that yeah. guy is Ben Kuchera. That's exactly what's going on right now. <laughs> Explosions are going on behind Ben, and he's like, and everything's fine, man. Game journalism's doing great. <laughs> That's, that's, it, that's the perfect analogy. <laughs> oh, the cough is real. I've um, I've got Mia Consalvo's application to be president of Digra. Do you guys want to hear some of the stuff she's got planned for Digra? Oh, please. please. Oh, wait, wait. One, one second, though. I want to see if this is true. Did Jimmy oh. Wales actually make a public statement about how shitty Wikipedia has become after they've let idiots get in control of fucking administrating it? I don't know. Is, is that is that oh, Baghdad Bob, by the way, is his name. Is that true? Because Jimmy Wales is 
you know, it's always every year they're doing their fundraiser, keep Wikipedia alive. Well, maybe, you know, go look at their talk pages if you want to see clusterfucks of arguments of the most biased shit from omission uh, I've ever fucking seen in my life. Oh, my God. I'm actually going to do that right now. Hold on. Oh, yeah, go look at the... Um, a really good example of this is go look at uh, the Bradley slash Chelsea Manning page and look at the talk page where they're arguing about this. And then look at the people who are arguing for changing all the pronouns and stuff. Go read up on who they are. Don't even if I want to. Yeah, it's it's a clusterfuck. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Sarah. What were you saying? Oh no, no, it's all right. It's, uh, I've just got like um, you know boring digra stuff, but um, it's not boring to me, man. I find that shit interesting. Oh, um, Mia Consalvo, her um, application to be president of digra. Uh, she lists a bunch of the things she wants to change. Um, oh, somebody's yelling at you saying it's digra, not digra. That's a Freudian slip on his part. He wants it to die, as do we all. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> no, it's just my English accent. I I don't pronounce <laughs> anything digra. Um, is, you guys can't pronounce the word twat either, so you know, swing it. You know, well, I, can, I can't. I can't pronounce anything if you've ever heard me try to say it verbally. <laughs> so I'm up shit the creek yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, I, I, no, no hyperbole here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, right? She says um, uh, she wants to change the direction Diagra's going in. Um, and sorry, I've just lost my place now. Yeah, she's like. Um, other mechanisms, such as the recent, recently launched Two Digra Journal, that can help those who need publication as a way to justify their attendance. So she's trying to get people in who aren't already in and don't qualify due to a lack of body of work. And then she says, are there other ways to make the conference valuable without double-blind peer review? Isn't that a strange thing for an academic to say? It's a very fucking strange thing for an academic to say. And it, it wow. Almost in... like they're not a good academic, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, incredible, yeah, if you can <laughs> believe it. Um, but it, it ties in really well with, um, I can't remember, was Adrian Shaw or T.L. Taylor who said in the Playful is Political Fishbowl about um, how the peer review process is slowing them down? Uh, I think so, actually. I think, were we talking about that last time? Yeah, 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 I think we were. Yeah. And and that's that's the thing. All of these people that, that and and the thing is, I've seen other. I'll I'll find all this to put in the videos. But I've mm -hmm. I've seen um I've read their blogs and <clears throat> on the Digra website there's a forum where these idiots talk about all this stuff in public because they're idiots, and they they say things like um in basically the, in their blog posts and stuff they go on about how they have to keep and they're annoyed that they have to keep justifying what they do to their academic colleagues because their academic colleagues are like, why would we want to fund any of this? Oh, God, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of exactly what Sokol was bitching about in the 90s. It's exactly what he was arguing about when he said, you've got postmodernists, you've got these very left-leaning or left-leaning academics with degrees in shit like gender studies <laughs> coming into science fields and yep. bitching about the way we do stuff and running their own journals that aren't peer-reviewed. In fact, that's the whole thing. If you look up the Sokol Affair, if you go to Wikipedia and look up the Sokol Affair, he fucking... Uh, S-O-K-A-L. He trolls them. He writes a fake bullshit academic article to show how shitty they are, and he puts in all these stupid SJW terms, and they publish it in one of their <laughs> biggest journals, thinking it's their greatest thing ever. And then he goes and does an interview and says, look how fucking dumb they are. That's a complete bullshit article I just released. <laughs> Wasn't that it, wasn't an article like gravity is sexism or some shit like that he, at one he, point? No, he was talking about how um, basically yeah shit like physics wasn't yeah, real yeah. because language yeah, exactly. affects it. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was some shit like that. And I, I was reading some of the stuff of that, and it just was like, what the fuck are they even talking? At first, I took it seriously because I was just is like, what, what's going on? Is that the one that says um, Newton's Principia Mathematica is a rape manual or something like that? <laughs> uh, hold on, let me let me see if I can get a quote from it. So I, I, I'm going to find that as well, because that's just like... <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's what, um, he, this is what Sokol said after this came out. He said, The results of my little experiment demonstrate, at the very least, that some fashionable sectors of the American uh, academic left have been getting intellectually lazy. The editors, or the editors of Social Text liked my article because they liked its conclusion, that the content and methodology of postmodern science provide powerful intellectual support for the progressive political project. They apparently felt no need to analyze the quality of the evidence, the cogency of the arguments, or even the relevance of the arguments and their proposed conclusion. Um, and his article was titled, Trans <laughs> this is great, Transgressing the Boundaries Towards a Transformative, I can't even say this word, 
humoretics of quantum gravity. It, it's just bullshit. It's buzzwords. He made a buzzword article to show how dumb they are, and it worked. God, you, uh, you know, this kind of reminds me of uh, of like shit like John Money and gender identity and how he's the father of gender and how these fucking people will parade him like that. Is that the guy funny. whose kid committed suicide? Yeah, that's – well, not his kid. He uh, – no, 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 the, the boy he butchered. Yeah, the boy, yeah, the boy he butchered. He, he turned a kid into basically uh, a psychological experiment by saying that a gender identity is – Nurture or not nature that you if you know you're born with a penis or vagina that you uh, choose what you want to be uh, and you're not really a man if you have a penis and you're not really a girl if you have boobs and a vagina right so th that that was what he would state that was the statement and he used the kid as an example even though that the mother was suicidal the father was turned into an alcoholic that uh, the kid turned well, back into a man yeah I mean look look what he Look what he did to the kid. He made he okay. So the boy was scarred badly during circumcision. Yeah, it, decided, it, it, it went old. He, yeah, and they decided to the best way to deal with this was to make him a girl. Um, and part of Money's therapy was having him and his twin brother get naked and basically dry yeah. up in his office uh, on film. Oh. Yeah, Sargon, it's it it was wild. But the thing was, is he, it, yeah. he took it to the grave. Even though it was a failed experiment, he took it to the grave and saying this proves that gender identity. Is nurture, not nature. But it was completely wrong, and it failed completely. But these fucking idiots will tell you, oh, no, no, John Money, that he's the guy. He's the father of gender. He's absolutely right. Gender identity, link back to John Money. And it just blows my fucking mind. I would have just thought that the um, the fact that like 99.99999% of people who just happen to then identify with the gender they're born with would kind of disprove what he's saying just uh, yeah, I would on say its so. own, you know. If, if that were the case, you'd get a much higher percentage of people saying, you know what, I'm going to choose to be a different gender. Well, it, again, it goes to bad science, good science. You've got somebody like Money, right? Who It's soft science, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, but you compare that to the stuff they've been doing recently, brain scans, right, where they're showing the difference between the female and male brain, where they're looking at stuff like epigenetic causes you know, behind maybe homosexuality. Yeah, so you've right. got real, real science, genetics, brain scans, all this really cool shit they're looking into. That's going to give you real answers. But people like Money and these kind of people, they're just, they're fucking taking a shot in the dark. They don't know. It's a random fucking guess. Uh, that's, well, it's that's ideologically driven bias, I think, is more the problem. Right. right. You know, that, it's, I don't even think it's a guess. I think, I think they've got an agenda that they're trying to just pick, cherry pick, um, you know, examples to, to create a narrative that doesn't really exist. Oh, that's an interesting question. Oh, somebody, somebody's saying Movie Bob is upset about the stream. Are you upset, Bob? No. Oh, are you gonna, are you trying to get me arrested now? Because I, well, I'm not in uh, fucking Ireland, so it's not really gonna work. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody also said in your chat, um, how does one get indoctrinated as an SJW, and how does that even work? I, you know, there was an experiment done a long time ago called the Stanford Prison Experiment, and that can kind of give you an idea of how easy it is, how quickly it is to change somebody's mind on things or get them indoctrinated into stuff very quickly. If you're ever interested in that. Oh, oh well, let, let's see. Somebody linked me to the Jimmy Whale statements. All right. I remember a controversy at Wikipedia about a breed of dog. When I looked into it, virtually all the er, editors were activists. What eventually happened, as I recall, is that they, all the activists on all sides were topic banned to their dismay. And then the Wikipedians were able to write neutral articles with more or less satisfied everyone. With Gamergate, I see the same dynamic. Too many of the people fighting about it care nothing for Wikipedia. Both sides are guilty. Coming to Wikipedia in order to write great wrongs always ends in sadness. We will be patient with you for a while, but then uh, the article as it is right now is not uh, unfair. To, it's just badly written battleground. Uh, you know what? Hey, Jimmy Wales, uh, that's actually uh, a decent answer. Yeah, that's exactly the right position to take on it. He's, he's concerned about neutrality of information. And he should absolutely be. If you want absolutely. Wikipedia to be good at what it purports to do, you need the fucking articles to be written by people that don't have a dog in the fight. It needs to be neutral. That's the whole point. Uh, can I just address Bob Chipman? He may yeah, go, go for it. Knock yourself out. Oh, Bob, I, 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 I'm the one who was talking to you about conspiracies on Twitter, and I can't help but notice that you weren't on the mailing list. That must sting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And he was like, there's no, because the thing is, a week before he'd been like, that he tweeted, there's no conspiracy, that's ridiculous, that's David Icke stuff, and then it turned out there was. <laughs> it's just like, Bob, it sucks for you, mate, you know? 
Well, and he would be the type of person that would be jealous and upset that he wasn't invited to the social justice warrior uh, conspiracy here. chat. Uh, here, here we go. Uh, he's got some tweets for you. And there's still, there are people are still sharing at Internet Aristocrats fake accusations that I tried to have a kid arrested, despite how easily it's disproven. Good job. Bob, they're on your fucking blog. What are you talking about, you lying <laughs> fuck? Oh, okay, okay, Bob, okay, Bob, Bob, let's, let's see how you disprove it. Just saying you disprove it isn't disproving it. So, come on, where's your evidence? I mean, Bob, it, 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 the comments are in the article you wrote on your fucking blog spot, or whatever that site is. And to top it off, on Twitter, you actually stated on the 23rd, if you see something you think is illegal, you'll contact the fucking police. Well, you're talking about whether or not this kid's acts were illegal. Basically, what you're saying is, if I think this kid's doing something illegal by trolling people on the internet in video games, I'm going to call the police. Fuck off! You're a joke! What the fuck are you doing? Uh, his response is that, uh, I don't know if this is his response, it is in a way a huge relief. I don't know what to do if I started making enemies who weren't stupid. Uh, I, I guess he's talking about you and so Oh my god, Bob, we all know that I mean, you're an erudite. Yeah, we all know how intelligent you are, Bob. It's he really goes, I mean, that sounds like work. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't know. Wait, am I, am I getting... It, it, it sounds like work. Yeah, it would sound like work because you wouldn't be familiar with at, what actual work is. Okay? We know what your profession is, which is, I guess, apparently trying to get teenage boys arrested on the internet. Isn't it you know, hugging you with Sarkeesian? He's the digital Batman. That's probably why he uses Bartman as a fucking picture on Twitter. He really thinks that's what he is. Uh, I wonder if this is how Superman feels about criminals in Metropolis. Wait, this one is also vulnerable to me looking at them, right? I, I don't know what that... How, what is that even supposed to entail? What the fuck are you trying... I, he's comparing that to us, but I don't know what he's talking about. No oh, you know, oh. you know he's watching this right now. Yeah, I, mean, I know, and he's, he's tweeting. Watching. He's tweeting as I'm reading these things. He's, just, he's tweeting these as I'm reading it. This is his responses. I'm, I'm guessing he wants to come on or something, or I, I have no idea. Well, here, here's the thing I don't get, Bob. If you're so fucking intelligent and we're so dumb, why are you watching us? <laughs> oh, oh, no, wouldn't the smart thing to do not to pay attention? But you're paying attention. I, I, I want to know when Bob's going to admit he's a bigot, because in one of his videos, I was going to do like a, a video sort of thing about Bob's opinions, um, because in one of them, he goes on about the um, the sort of AAA first-person shooter industry, and he, he literally says things like how it can be stopped, and he's like, well, I don't know if we can stop it. I don't think, I'd love to, but there's no way to do it. And I'm thinking, Bob, why the fuck would you want to? Let the people play their fucking games, you Nazi. <laughs> Jesus, you know. Why, I mean, why he is, he he's tweeting about feminists. Feminists are better than men and all that kind of stuff in his Twitter now that I'm going through it, so I, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, what, what a fucking shock. Yeah, this is a shock I've <laughs> been spinning for years. Uh, it's I, like right under the one after he talks about you, uh, uh, Jim. He, he's like, ladies, you might want to think twice about... <laughs> I, can't, I can't. Never mind. You know what? I'll just let everybody else read. I'm not even going to fucking okay. give this guy the time no, of day. I, I've actually got the ultimate question for Bob that I think we all really want to know. Bob, has being a giant fucking mangina ever got you laid? I, I'm, de I'm uh, very interested in seeing his response to that. Uh, Me too. It's, it's good to see Gamergate's origins described as what they are, a distraction from abuse women in gaming that... Um, gaming... What? I can't even fucking spell... What? I, I can't even read the shit that you're saying, man. See, and that's the difference. Like, uh, you know, I know people were speaking before they were upset on The Escapist, right, about Jim Sterling because they didn't yeah. like his opinion. Here's the difference between a Jim Sterling and a movie Bob. You may, not, you may not like Jim Sterling's opinion, but he's not going to try to use his position to fucking hunt down things he dislikes. He's not going to go after little people. He's not going to go after fucking kids. Movie Bob wants to use his platform, right, All you know, the social media and the site access to basically activize. You know, like what Jimmy Wales is talking about with Wikipedia. When you've got people who don't want to really do what they're supposed to do and they want to, you know, engage in activism, it shits everything up. That's what Movie Bob does. You know, he shits everything up. <laughs> um, I don't know if you were watching earlier I, in Zargon. There was a guy that came on Whiskies, and I don't. I think it was confirmed. His name was. They, he was also named Andrew, but he had an email about Silverstring and asking for data mining people with the hashtag Gamergate who were pro Gamergate and wanting to get that public information. Did anybody? Did anybody remember that? Anybody in chat if that was confirmed or not? He's. I, I brought him on the show, and he lost his job. The next day, like somebody called after that and talking about him leaking uh, emails about people, and he lost his job, and now he's linking me his new patron and stuff about how he's why he's trying to fight getting his job back. 
I find that very interesting. Uh, somebody find me that link to that that email so I can show it to the, to Sargon and IA here. Oh, they were, uh, yeah, I agree with you, Tony Stark, in the chat. Um, like I, again, uh, hold on. What was it he said exactly? Fuck, everything goes so quick. I can't. Oh, even movie, Bob. Yeah, everybody's flying in the chat. No, no, yeah, but he was saying something. Oh, yeah, he was saying um, I, he thinks Jim Sterling's cool, but he's upset with him, or he's not satisfied with the way he's been behaving as a consumer advocate. I get that. I agree with that. But again, they're worlds apart. Sterling is it's a different fucking dynamic altogether. Bob is just he shouldn't be in the position he's in. I don't know what why is he doing what he does? I mean, what joy does he get out of it? Do you even enjoy movies and games anymore, Bob, or do you just want to promote shitty SJW shit everywhere you go? Cuz that's what you're fucking doing. <laughs> I tell you, Jim Sterling, I when he first came on The Escapist, I, I thought I was going to hate him, and then I found myself really liking him, and then this social justice bullshit happened. And I just want to say to him, look, man, just just come over from the dark side. You know, you don't have to be there, and we can tell you don't really want to be there. You know, he, he, is, he, he seems like the sort of guy who really is more interested in games than ideology, you know? Right, and then, I mean, shit. Um, well, look at the, how The Escapist handled everything, right? I didn't like what Greg Tito had to say, but he was the only guy that fucking came out to his community and said, this is what I did, this is how I feel about it. The only one. Hmm. You've got Yahtzee who's made comments in a couple of videos. He, he hasn't really dipped his toe into it, but he, at least he talked about it. You've got Sterling, who his first comment on the whole thing was what? I have a connection to Zoe Quinn because I might be doing voice acting with her, and so I probably should stay out of it. Or it's a respectable fucking yeah. uh, you know stance. Hey, you know what? I can't I can't really give you an opinion right now because it's it could be tainted. Ah, actually, I've got um. Can can someone tweet me the link to the um? Didn't they put a seven page article up from female um? Not gamers. What the players? Uh, it was, oh, I thought it was female game developers. And yeah, I remember mm -hmm. people talking about how they thought that was disastrous because what was it like devs? one through four and six through nine or something. Like, there were one or two that got it, but a lot of them were saying stuff that wasn't at all accurate oh. or true. They Like, their opinions were being shaped by something, but I don't know what it was. Yeah, that's that's actually one of them to talk about, because it's it's the use of the word player that I find very interesting. Um, because oh, you think that was going to be the new Gamer Plus? Yeah. Oh, that's, what yeah. The, that's, the, the, that's exactly yeah, yeah. what I think it's going to be. Uh, I, th I think that... There, there really does seem to be a move for them all to start using the word player to refer to themselves. But that, to me, that's that's very consumptive. You know, that's someone who is being t dictated to by the game. You play the game because you 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 obey the game almost. You know, you're playing the game. Whereas a gamer, for me, I I can't speak for anyone else, but but for me, it's always been about exploiting the game. You know, doing yeah. what you can to get the advantage over the game or over the players, whatever. So it, it's, you know, one seems a lot more passive and one seems a lot more proactive. Oh, wait. People are saying get Bob on. I don't think his ego could fit through the door. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, um, I'd love to. I'd love to uh, talk. Sarga, you talking about when we were talking to Cause and how he was referring to them as they are the video game players and we are the gamers and that we are dead because they're hardcore versus the casual and the non-gamers. Yeah, I, yeah, exactly. It, it was. It's, it's very interesting that they start calling themselves that, and we're starting to see it a little bit more and more. Uh, and I find it, I, like you said, it's more passive because the way he explained it, he was like, "Look, I just want to play my games and and just take it how it is, and I want the skip button, you know, <laughs> like this shit like that." And you were talking about, like you said, more aggressive stance where you yeah, you know, I mean, the, look into the game, go see where you want to go, get all the achievements, you know, all that kind of shit. Yeah, you're you're out doing things for yourself rather than like. Right. receiving the game because uh, one of the things that always comes up is these people saying stuff like uh, they, I mean this is paraphrasing but deliver you know uh, exploring like the content like um, being delivered a message being sort of you know being given the experience of the game and I'm thinking well you know for me the experience of the game is learning how I can you know get a good combo going or something like that rather than just having the game kind of wash over oh. me which is the impression I got so guy, I want to ask. I want to ask you a question. Somebody was uh, uh, messaged me this about Digra stuff, and they said, "Have you looked into the treasurer, the treasurer Jesse Hollopanny, and the secretary Ashley Brown, and their connections with uh, other game researchers, quote unquote, and feminists?" Uh, don't he doesn't know if it's relevant, but they have uh, a large standing in the LARPing role playing scene and tabletop role playing games. Right. Okay. That's that's a really interesting question, actually. Um, Juicy Hollow Payne is the treasurer. 
and he's right. in Finland. And the founder of Digra was uh, Franz Myra, also in Finland. And the money still goes to his name. Huh. Which is interesting, given he was voted off in 2006. But Juicy has been the treasurer since the start. He's been the treasurer since 2003 every year. Right. Um, but the thing is, I'm just going to get some, get my notes quickly. Um, because uh, oh, I I, while, while you're doing that, somebody, somebody was saying Happy Video Game Nerd came out as an SJW. <laughs> That's that's disappointing. I thought his videos were good. I mean, they they're still. I mean, they're not bad because he's an SJW now, but that's disappointing. Wasn't the Amazing Atheist another one that came out as an SJW as well recently or something like that? I, no, I don't know. No, I don't watch his stuff anymore. Uh, Amazing Atheist had. Um, oh God, was it? I I don't remember what his name is. The game investigator or whatever it is. Do yeah. did a video on his channel about Gamergate that was pretty damn good. All right. I'm uh, actually quite surprised how late that uh, the Amazing Amazing Atheist chimed in on all this. All right. No, I would have um, been a bit quicker on it. Uh, back on topic with you, Sargon. So what? What? Um, yeah, I mean, do you know anything about these guys being involved with LARPing and tabletop games as well? I, I had no idea until so someone was asking. Fuck, you fuck LARPing and tabletop games, man. That's all fucking meaningless bollocks at the end of the day when it comes to this. Um, do you see? Do you, no, no, I'm not, and I'm not trying to do. You know, <laughs> I know, I, know, I, know, it's I love tabletop games, but not so much LARPing. But, um, do you see Hollopanian or whatever? This guy who's been the treasurer for the whole time. Um, this this is from uh, game, Games and Experimental Entertainment Laboratory. Juicy worked at the Nokia Research Center for 16 years, most of his adult right. life, and as a game interaction researcher before realizing he could do something else in his life as well. See, I mean, he, he works for Nokia. Well, wait, he works for Nokia? or uh, uh, What? Nokia, Nokia, damn it. The oh, phone Nokia. people. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, Nokia. Okay, so he does work for Nokia. That's what I was saying. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What I mean, what's the relevance to that? But him being Nokia, I mean, where does that? What does that have to do with him and and the Dar and Digra? I mean, well, I'm not sure to be honest. I can't. I, this is probably going to be a video that's split in several parts because there's a lot to go over. Okay, okay, I got you. So you just give me yeah. an idea. But, okay. But the the thing about this guy is that he's not an SJW. He's he's an academic. You know, he, he's a professional. Um. But I, I think that there's probably more to do with the uh, the Nokia connection there. But I just I haven't looked into that yet. Well, I'm sure this is like the same thing when we were looking at the patron stuff and we'd find these dummy accounts and they had interesting business ties. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, when we were yeah. sitting there and that was the weirdest thing ever. It was like, okay, we found this dummy account and they're 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 fought and they're paying these people but the people that they're linked to was like companies that you wouldn't expect to be linked to this stuff. So what, you know, it was so fucking weird. I, I'm wondering, I think that might be a bit of a red herring though. I think they might just be, um, you know, automated followbacks or something like probably, that. Probably, yeah, probably. That could be that too. You never know. But, um, but yeah, the, the, the Digra thing, these, these people are all, it, there's, I th it really seems like the academics have got their own agendas if they're not ideologues, you know. So mm. I don't think that they know what's happening, you know. Or I mean, if they do, they then they're not against the idea because uh, what was her name? Um, uh, what's her face? Uh, sorry, I don't know. The the woman who linked my video in her article. Uh, oh yeah, um, Toril Mortensen. Um, she she lived she, her her sarcastic end comments were, you know, uh, feminist professors and bloggers are out to get their games and they're fighting oppressive systems, criticizing structure of peer reviewing. Yep, that will really hurt the gaming industry. And I'm thinking, bitch, at this point, I'm not concerned about the gaming industry. I'm concerned about academia, <laughs> criticizing the structure of peer reviewing. What's wrong with the structure of peer reviewing? Oh, uh, and they don't like that. They don't want a peer to review it. They just want someone to take the shit that's being fed to them. Look, they they tell us this all the time with games. They want the non-gamers. They want the people who are the casual gamer who doesn't look and and look into the game. They don't want the hardcore gamers that interject and want and say what they want in their games. They want somebody who will just eat the shit that's fed to them, right? That, that's what they always fucking tell us. So, and so that's why that. I think the player thing is so important because it really I'll, I'll find relevant quotes where. It's very obvious what they're saying is you should sit there and be dictated to by the game rather than actively right. engage with the game and trying to beat the game. You know exactly. They don't want you to think. They want you to just take the shit and shovel it in your mouth. And I and I think it goes into more money aspect than anything else. To be honest with you, and and this might be the reason why maybe we've seen shovelware if you want to call it that at the same time. I I don't know. I'm jumping at strings there, but that's just me. 
All right, uh, hold on one sec. All right, uh, short fat otaku. I'm going to try one last time. I guess he had to activate his Google Plus thing. Also, somebody was asking or commented uh, towards us. Be aware, there are some actual academic SJWs. They are fucking evil. Uh, no, I'm well aware. Um, there are too many. <laughs> believe me, believe me. I, I've looked into a lot of that shit, and um, they seem to. A lot of them seem to be sociologists. Uh, I'll be honest. <laughs> Um, that's just, that's honest to God. That's the truth, and there's a history behind it, which is pretty fucking interesting. But it's a topic for another day. Jim, uh, what is your take on EA's "It's not it's on us" GamerGate stance? Yeah, like I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, in case you missed it, um, it's ridiculous. You t oh, wait, are you talking about the anti-rape thing that EA released, where they said uh, we're yeah, not the anti-rape thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. I don't know. He said the EA's gotten hashtag GamerGate stance, not it's on us as well. I guess maybe he wanted both. I don't know. Well, no, yeah, here's the thing. Uh, Electronic Arts, what the fuck are you doing? You make video games. I don't need to be told not to rape people. Guess why? I'm not a fucking rapist. Uh, what? Like, I, it's the weirdest fucking thing to see a video game company even engage in talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's easy PR. How about, um, how about EA's next campaign, uh, Let's Not ma you know, Murder Babies? Why hasn't EA made a what? campaign about... Yeah, no, EA, let's not kill babies. That's a hey. bad thing to do. Why aren't they doing that campaign? Do they like to kill babies? EA, are you saying you like to kill babies? <laughs> of course they do. What are you talking about? If they're siding with the feminists, they're pro-abortion. They, well, no, no, what I mean is they, they made a statement saying they don't like rape. So if they haven't made a statement saying they don't like killing <laughs> babies, they must like killing babies. EA, you need to get on that. <laughs> I know. Listen, they're probably going to listen to the stream now, and they're going to start putting crazy shit out there. You better calm that shit down, internet. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, man! These people are crazy. I, I don't understand why game company make video games. That's all you have to fucking do. That's all we want. It's the easiest thing in the world. Make video games. You think it would be that easy? Someone said invite Leah Alexander. Get her on. Oh uh, yeah, it, I, I would love to see her come in here. Her, uh, she'd probably be drunk. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I'm wearing headphones, and because she's a megaphone, it would blow my eardrums out. <laughs> that that, and she'd probably be drunk by the time she got on. Didn't she like walk around with a drink 24/7? I, I don't know. Every video I've seen her in, she's got a fucking drink in her hand. So, and you tell me. Everything I've seen her in, it, she just seems like she's gone mad with power. <laughs> yeah, um, that too. I want to explain to the lady, you don't really have very much power to go mad with. You know, it, it, she, she seems crazy. Uh, Sargon, uh, are you... Fuck, man, this chat, I can't even see how you follow this. Um, are any of you aware of Aaron Gojari's GoFundMe for legal defense against ZQ? Or literally, who and where did it where did it go? Never heard of it. Did you hear about that internet? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading this up because somebody said it's a White House campaign. Um, it's on us to help prevent sexual assault. EA is proud to stand with the White House today, and uh, uh, its launch of "It's on Us," a new public awareness account Ooh. aimed at uh, changing how people think of sexual assault. You know, because we all find it so entertaining. We need to change our opinions on this. Okay. Since you mentioned the White House, I've actually got something for that. Um, Gamer Sutra, Chris Totten, wrote an article about a White House game jam that they did, mm -hmm. where they went to the White House and did a game jam. Wait, really? They, they did a game jam I'll, I'll tweet that shit, man. I'll tweet that shit. Seriously, I'm not joking. It's. What? Yeah, and speaking of game jam, does anybody ever get a hold of Matty Lesson after your video? That was like the biggest thing I really hope someone did was get Somebody a hold needs of. To. Um, I, sw I swear. How? Where is he? How does he? I mean, there's too much shit going on. This well, guy. He, he, here's know. the thing. He got fired um, because of because of what uh, because of that failed game jam. And Zoe right. Quinn, Jared Rosen, and Nathan Grayson played a part in that. They played a part in creating that narrative. Go. You know, I spent like a couple days looking into this, but it's really interesting looking in the timing of that failed game jam, and Disney's buyout of Maker Studios, who hosted it. Um, their buyout offer was affected by the failure of that game jam, and I so. There's some interesting shit going on with that and the people involved. I just involved. don't understand how, out of all this stuff, that nobody has gotten a hold of this guy to get him saying this. Cause well, it, uh, he's I, probably I, well off to begin with. I mean, he's probably on a beach drinking a Mai Tai, thinking fuck's oh, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sargon, I'm sorry to catch you off. I know you were looking for your... Uh, you Yeah, no, I've got it. Um, I just tweeted it out. Um, basically, uh, Obama in 2011 it. said, I'm calling for investments in educational technology that will help create digital tutors. As, as, that are as effective as personal tutors, educational software as compelling as the best video game. And, um, yeah, and Christopher Totten, uh, I, I think he, he actually got an invite to this game jam. Uh, he literally says, the White House is holding a game jam, jam and we got an invitation. Wow, look at these uh, pictures. They're actually standing there at the podium. Yeah, where they, he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's with, um, 
Yeah, yeah. Look exactly. at the cupcakes. They got cupcakes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Jamming with a purpose. You know, that's it, it, it's all. Well, I, this would make sense in Obama's. If, if Obama administration, this would make sense in the White House. I mean, they're socialist Democrats for one. Okay, that's that's the consensus of that party. So yeah, that would make sense. They would bring these people on here. They like that kind of stuff. I mean, if they're talking about cultural Marxism at least. Socialists will like eat that shit up for fucking breakfast any day. So I mean, maybe they probably bring them on for that. I have no idea. Well, don't don't forget too. I mean, Obama's administration has made comments in the past. So's Holder about social justice. So, yeah. Well, no, I mean, they made more than more than just no, no, that. No, no, but I mean, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is. Uh, when when you have academics, business people, and people in politics all talking about the same thing and all kind of knowing each other, it's probably a good idea to pay attention. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you've seen the video, but he did a he, Obama standing there and he did a stand up about uh, the Holocaust and he used terms like ableist. Sexism. Wait, wait. When you say what? he did a stand up, do you mean like a Robin Williams fucking? No, 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 no. I mean he stood up in front of his podium and he talked about the Holocaust and, and something I can't remember. Somebody find there's there's a video on YouTube of it and he's he uses the words ableist, sexist. Ageist. Uh, <laughs> I swear to God, he says this. I, somebody gave this to me a while ago. This was on poll a while back, and they were like, they're like Obama saying crazy ass shit 101, and, and they and you could just click on it. You know how in four in four chan, I, I, I that they, they they put the videos. You just click on it, and you just like, and we're watching it. And I was like, holy shit, what is going on? Hold on. Well, and again, I think it points to, I mean, why do you think you have, uh, as this Gamergate thing has been going on, why do you think you've seen, uh, you know, conservative people paying attention to it? It's probably because they've dealt with this shit in politics for a while now. Mm -hmm. I think they get it. I honestly do. I think they get the other side, and they've probably seen it. And I think, you know, people like Sokol and academics got it, too. And now as right. gamers, we're seeing the same thing, and we're starting to get it. Yeah, um, I, I, think it, I think it really is just a pattern of behavior. Yeah. Um, from the from the extreme left, and what what annoys me the most about it is that they think they're so superior, and they think they're so su superior that they will just openly mock the 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 other side, no matter how no matter how far right or to center center they are, and and even some like center left, you know, if they're not far enough to the left, then they they uh -oh. just deride them absolutely no respect. Well, yeah. I mean, look what happened with Silverglade. I mean, here's a guy who started uh, Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, right? Which is like an ACLU-ish kind of organization. But I mean, Silverglade had always said stuff like, "Oh, well, you know, I'm a classic liberal. I, you know, and I fought in the '60s. I was on the college campuses when we were trying to get free speech from the conservative academia at the time." But he said, "What he found out is once these leftists took." powerful positions as deans and professors, they weren't fighting for free speech, they were fighting for their speech, and essentially did the exact same thing they had protested against. <laughs> um, uh, and go ahead, so go he, ahead. But I mean, it, it helps to highlight that. I mean, here's a guy who identifies as a classic liberal, you know, a classic left-leaning uh, political philosophy saying, the people you see nowadays aren't anything like what they used to be. It's a completely different fucking breed. Um, I tweeted out to you and Sarg on that video, Sarg, it's only two minutes, but he stands up and he was denouncing, this is in 2012, where President Barack Obama denounces Holocaust denial, but he starts using, he uses sexism, racism, and xenophobia, homophobia, ageism, ableism, and like all these fucking terms all in one go uh, for uh, people who deny the Holocaust, which I don't care if you believe it happened or not, but it's just interesting that he uses those fucking words to begin with. Yeah, here's what I don't get um, with the whole Holocaust denial thing. You have all these different Jewish rights organizations saying that they, they're seeing a rise in anti-Semitism in Europe, right? <laughs> right. And you have, you, but at the same time, you have all these restrictive laws saying you can't talk or deny the Holocaust. They don't see that those are correlated. That when you try to you know, suppress speech, even if the idea you may disagree with or think is crazy, that it makes people start to think, oh, they're hiding something. So, like, you get arrested in Germany for being against it. You get sued in France or Britain for being... You know what I mean? Like, it's, yeah. it's fucking crazy. That's why it's on the rise. I, I hate that more than anything. Honestly, I, I want people to come out and say, well, you know, I deny the Holocaust or whatever. So their research can be proven to be fallacious. Right, because, at least fucking let the debate go on. I, I don't yeah, understand why you won't let debate go on. It's just crazy. Yeah. Well, the thing is, that begs questions, doesn't it? If, if you can't stand to have... They're, they're obviously faulty evidence presented, analyzed, and proven to be false. Then is there something more that we need to know? <laughs> you know? Right. Well, and that's, I think, what's, again, that's, yeah. I think, why censorship or suppressing uh, somebody's free speech is right. dangerous. It what is. you do is you sway moderates, you, you sway independents who don't think one way or the other on anything, but they see the actions that are taking place and they think, oh shit, these guys are up to something. 
You know right. I mean? and, yeah, right. But I mean, you're talking about the EU here, right? And you have to understand that these are the same fucking people that let that vote in people secretly without like anybody taking a vote. And people like uh, you know Farage will come out and fucking call on him. What was it like, Juncker? He recently called out for being voted in secretly, and he was like, "Why is this not public? Why? Why would we do this secretly? But yet we're going to talk about being a democratic republic, you know? And make no fucking sense." <laughs> Remember the five hundred grillion? Okay, oh my God. everybody's like everybody's retweeting my video and talking about anti-Semitism. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, great. Shut it down. Aggravating my asthma. <laughs> everybody's like, but so many guys like so many isms. I can't contain it. But it's just interesting that Obama would use words that we see in shit, like isms that we see in fucking Tumblr. Uh, on, and, and anything in general, just it's. It, I find it interesting. Well, least, again, his his opinions, I think, are being. Um, this is why, like this academic angle, when I was talking about the source, like with the Tumblrism shit, it, it really is academics. It honest to God really is, and they influence politics and they influence uh, industries. That's that's your fucking source. If you want to look it up and see the people involved, those are the people that are, you know, influencing political advisors right. that are influencing presidents, or they're the people that are influencing corporations and newspapers. And well, I mean, you could look back uh, how this all came about, like during the Cold War, and you're talking about stuff like when the Communist Party USA was still around before they got dismantled, and who was involved in those people, like the names that were in that 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 whole group, and then from there to where the whole idea of the what was it the the, the national test, and then it became statewide test, like the FCAT. I don't know where you, I know I don't know if you have a test. You should have a test, but you take in gym at, at your where you live at in the states, where yeah. like everybody gets. And now and they started. And when I was going in high school and middle school and, and elementary school, we were learning basic what we needed to learn, and then it started transitioning from that into okay, you're learning how to pass pass the FCAT or the the CAT test, this new test that the state has put out for you. And it was to raise the demographic of uh, minorities scoring statistics to that of uh, people with high scores. I think it was like Asians and Caucasians at the mm -hmm. time. And I don't know if that's still the case now. I don't know what the statistics are now. I haven't looked at it. I, I was telling Sargon about this, and I said, and over time, it just kept failing all the programs that they were trying to do. And then the, the problem was is that the schools were more focused on it because the, the government changed it to where, okay, if your county – your, your school in this county does not get uh, this score. Like the school doesn't score at A or B, and I know you know what I'm talking about when I say this. Yeah, you're talking about the standardized testing being – Yeah, a, exactly. Yeah, uh, and money that, that, yeah, and a money bag. So if your school scores a C, then you're not going to get funding, but the school scores an A, they're going to get all the funding in the fucking world. And so the schools would have to focus on that instead of actually teaching them what they need to know, and they'll come out and go into college, and they have no fucking idea what they're doing. And so, and then, and the same thing would happen. And, and the people going to college are just fucking retards or, or idiots. And they'll come out, and they'll have no idea what the fuck they're supposed to do, at least in their field. And then it comes into employers being hesitant on hiring people with master degrees because they don't know if they really know the material or not. It's it's mind blowing how the system really works that way nowadays. It's crumbling. the The American educational system is crumbling. I'm glad you're getting out. Yeah, I'm getting the fuck out of Dodge. I don't want to be here when shit starts bursting. I'm going, I'm going to Germany in like four years. Once I'm done, I'm gone. I, I'm just getting the hell out. Either that or UK. I'm telling you, Europe's going very much the same way. Yeah. I'm well, going, I'm going to Asia. That's where the money markets are going to be. Mm. Good luck to all of you, though. <laughs> I'm I'm either going to Germany or the UK, depending on if if UKIP wins. That's all I care about. That's my that's my that's my go-to. going to win shit. Hey 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 now hey now don't don't kill my dream. Hey okay. now, trust me, I'm telling you, let it go, man. <laughs> I know, I know. They, they, they only won, yeah, they only won seats into the, uh, it's, it's not the fucking local elections, it's not uh, the UK, they they won seats for fucking the EU, it's a different thing. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I, well, yeah. The, 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 the thing is, basically, um, the, the British public votes for the, our MEPs, and yep. we, we, we send the most anti-European people to the European Parliament. Which I, I love. Think, I fucking yeah, love. I, them. I, me too. Me too. I fucking. Have you, do you know who Daniel Hannan is? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. Uh, uh, Jim. No, you, I, I haven't heard the name. No. Oh, I will. I will. I will tweet you a link. The guy. He is a master orator. He's he is, fucking great. He, he's he's a fundamental believer in the virtues of English justice as well. You know, and the parliamentary system, and and just the he he's such a traditional sort of. Um, he, he's the sort of person you'd have expect to have been produced by the school system like a hundred years ago. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, so I, wait, is he is he similar to what was the guy? Um, I remember somebody saying if you really want to piss off when I made that Euro skepticism video, they're like if you really want to piss off people in the comments, tell them Enoch was right. So is he kind of like Enoch or 
Am I saying that name right? The politician who, who had said in Britain, uh, if you're not careful with your immigration policy when you're walking down the streets of London, it's not going to look like London anymore in 30 years. Uh, I don't think he said that, but he, I, think he, I think he's similar. Um, I'm just going to tweet it. Just um, out, out there, so you guys... Th this is um, a video of him berating Gordon Brown in the uh, EU Parliament, and he is just... He is based as fuck. That if you want, if 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 there's a guy who deserves the term based, it's this guy. He's standing up in front of li you know literally all of Europe and just telling Gordon Brown that he was a tosser. Uh, in oh, here, terms. Here, here, here we go. Yeah, it was Enoch Powell uh, in 1968, oh, the uh, River of Blood speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was right as well. <laughs> well, yeah. If you look at the demographics, I mean, especially yeah. is it uh, London? Especially is. Very fucking different than what it was. He was he's slandered to anything. You, you know, his his name in in respectable circles, his name is Mud, um, because he was being honest. Um, you know, he wasn't he wasn't towing the line. He wasn't following the narrative. And this was yeah decades ago. You know, this was fifty years ago or something. Uh, let me let me. I want to ask you something, Sargon, because since you're over there, I know you you probably follow the uh, the political movements in the EU in general. So I would assume you do. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure on that. Do you? Uh, yeah, to to okay. a certain degree. Yeah. Okay, I, I just want to know, and I, maybe you could touch up on this too, uh, IA, because what was going on with Sweden when their fucking president said, okay, we're going to have more immigrants, and we can't afford it, but you guys need to pay for it anyways, when he came out with that statement? And uh, and then just before, what was it, elections? Did he even re-win that? Um, I'm not sure. I don't actually recall that statement, but that sounds exactly like the sort of thing I'd expect from the. President. He okay. I'll find the video. It's like a five minute thing, but he comes out like uh, about what was it like? I think about a couple of weeks before uh, the elections in Sweden, and he was like, "Okay, so we ran into some problems. We have way too many immigrants, and but and we're planning on having more immigrants, uh, and we can't afford it. So we're going to increase your taxes uh, for the taxpayers because you guys need to pay for this because we're not going to stop it." That was basically like he what, what he was saying. Uh, I'm sure that the chat will fucking find this video because it was like all over poll for for quite some time, and people were just like Sweden, yes, all over the place. I love that Sweden has become the cuck capital of the fucking world, <laughs> and everyone. <laughs> <getting it. laughs> like that's the image that people have. Uh, you know, I remember there was a documentary. There's a video on YouTube. I'll see if I can find it. Where it was this. Um, <laughs> This 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 like this very tiny, fragile-looking black chick that came from Mo I think it was Mogadishu or something, and she got a job as a reporter in Sweden, and she wrote a paper that the, um, the SJWs didn't like, and she basically left. She went back to the the fucking Mogadishu, and she was like, yeah, "I feel safer <laughs> walking down the streets there than I do in fucking Stockholm." Yeah, well, that's uh, actually the um, the great sort of underground, untouchable elephant in the room in Europe is, um, and uh, you know, I, I've. I'm going to preface this with I, I don't hate Muslims, but Muslim immigration is almost entirely responsible for the dramatic spike in rapes in Europe. Well, um, Sweden's number two on the list. If you look yeah. at the world rape statistics, Sweden's like number two, and the other four are uh, African nations. Yeah, and uh, in Britain, we've got some rape crisis centers. Uh, uh, wait, you tell me that, that India is not on the rape statistics? Nope. Sweden is, no. is, nope, Sweden's way higher than really? any other country. Like, it's higher than India, it's higher than America, it's higher than fucking any other country in Europe. And they won't talk really? about it. You, you know they have a rape festival in India, right? I just, just uh, like, and one of these tribes have, like, a traditional old rape festival in one of their old villages, and some guy did a paper on it, and then India came out uh, saying they wanted it removed, like, from the website. The, oh, the hey, hey, here we go, from the International Business Times. Uh, here are the top five countries with rape. Um... Lesotho, or how do you say this? I'm probably wrong. L e s o t h o. Never heard of it. What is that? Oh, that's Snowden. Um, okay, uh, Sweden's number two has the <laughs> highest rate of rape in Europe, with the UN reporting 69 cases per 100,000 inhabitants in 2011. Jesus. In 2010, Swedish police recorded the highest number of offenses. About uh, again, this in so yeah, it goes up every year. 63 in 100,000. According to the rape crisis advocates in Sweden, one third or one third of Swedish women have been sexually assaulted by the time they leave their teens. According to a study in 2003 and later studies in 2009, Sweden has the highest sexual assault rape in Europe and amongst the lowest conviction rates. See, this this is exactly the problem we're having in Europe. Um, if you look at Britain and you you, you go to um, the, the, I think it's rapecrisis.org or something. 
and it'll give you a map of all the rape crisis centres in England. Mm -hmm. And then if you just go for, if you just Wikipedia, Muslim immigration into England, it's exactly the same map. Oh, Everyone, fuck. Did the, did the, I, uh, I, did the chat, I'm, I'm sorry, did the chat I think, break? Yeah, I think chat broke, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not even kidding. There's, like, and e to the point where, like, there's there's the odd sort of enclave uh, just north of Kent or something, and they've got a, a rape crisis centre, you know, all the way over there, miles away from any of the other ones, which are the, sort of the centre of England, which are where all the main Muslim immigrations happen. And it's and in in the papers, it's it's Orwellian. They will never name the people who are take who the, every every other month, say you you hear this new grooming gang, where it's you know a, a group of men have started you know grooming teenage girls and taking advantage, raping them, doing all various nasty things, and they won't name the people in the gang because the names are always Ahmed something, Mohammed something, you know, and and they, they, they in the BBC they just don't name the people anymore because it is so obviously a Muslim rape gang. And oh, Lesotho, that's how you pronounce it. I'm sorry, I'm just I got the chat to work okay. again. People are trying to tell me how to say the name of that country. Um, was it wasn't it the uh, wasn't it the, the the head was it Joyce Thacker? Who recently just retired because, or just quit quit her job because she knew about like the rape allegation that was going on in in uh, what was it in Rothingham? Wasn't that isn't that something that happened over there too? Like it's like fourteen hundred kids. Oh wait, were, are you talking about yeah. the one where they wouldn't convict them because they didn't want to seem racist? Yes, yes. And then so she just quit. Like the police commission commissioner stepped down, <laughs> and then the actual child service um, commission uh, person, uh, Joyce Thacker, was like, "Yes, I knew about it. We were taking like UKIP families away." I read that in the Huffington Post, mind you. Yeah. It's, and, it's, it's fucking insane, right? But the thing is, what what annoys me about this is that <clears throat> this this entirely plays into their narrative. If they can actually have ridiculously high rape stats, then there is all the more reason for feminism, right? You know, all the more reason to give these people more power, more influence, more credibility. They're saying, hey, the rape stats are off the charts. We need to do something about it. And it's like, yeah, but they're off the charts because you guys were going on about how great unlimited immigration is from Muslim countries. You know, it, you've created the problem that you think you are the solution to, and I'm. I don't know if it's on purpose. I can't believe it's on purpose because, you know, why would you wouldn't want to? But it it, it it's feeding itself. And the the thing is, the only other option is that they're such fucking monumental morons that they can't see this. Uh, it just it, it blows my mind. But at, at the same time, it, it, this all stems back to like what the EU and their fucking sloppy ass open border policies and oh. telling people, yes, we're gonna have multiculturalism and we're gonna have immigration, whether you like it or not. And, and, and shit like that, or where uh, Germany is stepping in to control Greece and stuff like that. And, and yeah. it's just it's it's really an EU thing. And and to be honest with you, I think there needs to be a reform. I think when when I like when you did your your skepticism uh, video, I, I think you're absolutely right. You know, comparing the EU to the Pan American Union, uh, absolutely, it's it's fucking insane that how much they involve themselves into things and all the fucking back dealings that goes on between there. One it, one thing it, it is crazy, yeah. One thing that really bothers bothers me about the EU, and I've 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 got a personal dislike for the EU because it's just so anti-Western values. It really does my head in. But the the current uh, prime minister of Italy was a is a technocrat appointed by an EU board. He, he's not democratic. Right. Elected. That's yeah, that what I'm talking about. They were arguing about. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember. I think it was Farage was talking about that. Um, yeah. Was yelling at them, saying that they, you know, you're doing your own little elections. It's not even democratic. Yeah, and and he did, they just did that again with Yonker, a British guy, uh, uh, just recently. Go look up on UKIP's uh, YouTube channel, and it's about, uh, I think, what, what, like about three weeks old. And I was watching it because I, I go there and watch all the stuff all the time. And he was doing one about talking about the same thing, where they were doing basically setting up for Yonker to come in and do the same exact thing. They wanted this whole secret fucking voting and just push this guy in. And, and he was like, "Listen, you know, he's a good guy, but you need to uh, sit back and you need to make this public." I thought we were a dem democracy. What, what are we doing here? Like, let the people fucking vote. Why? Why do you just decide that you're just going to be the only ones who vote on it and then move on? Going to do it the right way. People, right, people, exactly. People my way. That's the problem. And they, they've got an agenda. They've they've got Barroso is a snake. Fuck Barroso, so, man. Yeah, he's he's the most he's the least trustworthy man I've ever seen. And I, he's such I, a smug motherfucker. I guess he is. That's why I said fuck Barroso. I can't stand that guy. I can't stand him. And he, he he's again. The, I I think I think I, I and I hate to sound all conspiratorial, but I think they're globalists. You know that I think well, that makes sense. 
I, I think that they're trying to erase European identities by opening all the borders and trying to encourage. They they use terms like the free flow of people and say, yeah, but what right. does that mean? You yeah. know, that that means people coming from very poor areas to rich areas, making the rich areas very poor. Well, look, I could pull up articles of these people from the EU coming out and say, and like I said, basically saying, like they told France, they told France when France was getting pissed off about it that they that they were like, well, you're going to have multiculturalism whether you like it or not. You're going to accept the fact that we're going to and we're going to basically get, invite these people into your country whether you fucking want it or not. Oh, and that's, um, and that's, wait, that's, wait, 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 guys. Uh, so somebody was linking this in chat, uh, and I'm going to have to wrap up here soon too. But yeah, uh, yeah. Too, too, uh, what is it? it, it uh, somebody was linking to Kotaku in action. EA director comments on Gamergate. Uh, oh, Chris Mansell says, uh, let's see, uh, the group of gamers are angry, pissed. I don't think this incident with Miss Quinn and the media are the direct cause of this exclusively, but rather a spark that blew up smoldering issues that have been building for years. The level of anger and commitment by these gamers is intense, and it's growing. Something is wrong here. This is abnormal. My uh, opinion, it's not about social justice warriors. That has always been a strong influence in gaming. Uh, something uh, sometimes it's annoying, sure, but it can also be a positive force as well. A much needed uh, conscience, a reminder to us all to consider the ways we cr uh, what we create says. Uh, I'm just trying to read through it because it's a bit of a long statement. Uh, okay, I think the real problem here is alienation, not a values that's misguided. It's not liberal conservative values, politics, or worldview. It's fear of being meaningless. It's about our loss of connection between ordinary gamers and the game industry. We are losing our connection with people. I think our industry has been drifting further and further away from our fans. As our business gets larger and our global reach broadens, this lack of a relationship or mutual feedback of a personal connection between ourselves and the audience is really the true culprit of the most deep-seated anger here. There is no connection with us, no trust, not even understanding. Yet gamers depend more and more on us for their primary entertainment, and we absolutely depend on them as customers. Yet our relationship is increasingly one-sided, they, uh, uh, they being the unit sale, the converted uh, percentage on the acquisition funnel or the revenue target, not the person, not the player, not the gamer who is or was exactly like us all. We need them, and they know we need them. They need us too, but we've forgotten that. Do we sometimes feel uh, we don't really need them? This alienation and dependency brings about the epic rage. The think, uh, okay, think banks, uh, cellular providers, airlines, cable companies, and the hate those relationships generate with customers who need that service but get treated like beasts. That's our future. Some would say our present. And in the environment, a backhanded slap to a mass group of gamers who are mass-labeled misogynists, rapists, gamers are dead, games ashamed are just fighting words yelled by a distant, contemptuous, unconnected gaming entity that is part of the establishment elite. And this same recipe, the exact same spark of every single race political uh, protest riot, the world over from the beginning of time. And like every protest, there are those who support the activists and those who support law and order and the establishment. But the root cause of this event is usually not what they are yelling and fighting about, but something much deeper and harder to explain. Usually being oppressed, insulted, or generally, uh, generally being abused and invisible. And in this outburst of anger, some of the media turned and fired into the gamer protesters, which then became a riot. Both sides now dehumanize the other, making it easier to escalate. I wish I knew how to f diffuse this. Your friend, Chris. Hmm. Well, I, I, you know, I can agree. I absolutely agree. I don't see anything else to say on that one. That's surprisingly astute, yeah. yeah I think that uh, they, at least we know where EA stands. And I hope to God they stick to it. Well, like I said, just just make games. That's that's what we want. That's what everybody fucking wants. We want video games. That's really easy. I don't need the gaming press to scream at us and tell us how terrible we are and write opinion pieces and shit up the relationship. And I I hope I hope that sentiment is shared at EA and other gaming companies. I really do. It, it's a fucking mutually ben or beneficial relationship. It's symbiotic. We support you as customers, we buy your products, and in return, you fucking value that relationship and don't shit on us. Right, I, I, I definitely agree. I mean, I, there's, I don't really want... I, there's nothing I can really say to that, except it's just I agree completely. I, it, like, I mean, there's nothing wrong. He, he addressed everything that I really wanted to hear, that this is fucked up, this is wrong, and, and, uh, and that we don't condone it, and that we need to get more in touch with uh, our side, that we've forgotten that. Well, yeah, well, somebody explain to me what... I, I feel like I took a drug at some point, and my mind has gone fucking crazy. So EA is the good is making the good fucking statements as a business. Uh, Moot is turned into a social justice traitor and fucked up 4chan, but low tax of something awful is allowing free speech. What the fuck is happening on the internet? Black well, is white now, man. It and really fucking is. Down, cats are living with dogs. The world's gone mad. <laughs> I want to know what the establishment response to this is going to be. 
what what are the what are the gaming press going to say to this? Um, they, I, he's going to get hammered. He's going to be he's going to yeah. for putting yeah. that that statement out, which is a reasonably neutral statement. He's going to get fucking hammered. That's what I'm, I'm expecting. So. Um, I'm, I'm assuming they're going to turn on him and just slam him in the ground. Yeah, they they are. They're they're going to absolutely go after this guy. But I'm sorry. Is, go ahead, Sergeant. If that's like, um, I mean, is that how much uh, does that statement represent? EA is an organization. If EA is smart and they want to turn around the bad press they've gotten off of Origin and other decisions they've made, they would back his fucking statement to the hilt. Uh, they would absolutely happened. back it. Now, what what sort of um what sort of difficulty would come up for the for the gaming press or the, not the gaming press? Jeez, why am I calling them that? Um, the social justice press uh, who are going to slam this guy for saying that. What kind of pressure is that going to put on them if EA uh, becoming uncooperative with them? EA should become uncooperative with them. All these large companies should. I, again, the I gaming think... press doesn't hold any power. They're not the ones buying your games. We are. And we're not demanding anything of you. Just make fucking video games and stop letting these assholes shit up the relationship. That's really reasonable on our part. Right. And, and to really answer your question, Sargon, I, they really can't do much. I think that if, if EA was just to stop working with these guys, you would see less of these fucking people at E3. You would see less of these people being invited to go test out their fucking games and do writing articles on it, and they would just dwindle into fucking nothing. I mean, that that's really, if you're talking about that, well, that that's, that's what I was expecting. Um, oh, oh, God, yeah, and Bobby Kotick is right. What the fuck is going on? Like, Bobby Kotick was the devil four years ago on the internet, and now everybody's like, oh, shit, he was completely right. Tim Schafer's an asshole who can't run a budget. <laughs> EA is now the good guy. His websites are switching back and forth. It's just, it's really weird. It's like a fucking Twilight Zone episode is playing itself out on the internet in real time. Yeah, it, it really is. Um, what, 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 thing is, the, if, if EA can make the, um, the lives of these, these, uh, these bloggers really difficult, then... Surely they can't just go directly after this guy, uh, Chris. You know, surely, surely they can't. And so... <laughs> they, oh, they absolutely will. They'll they'll say that. Uh, I, I I can think of a couple angles they'll take at it. Um, it'll be oh, um, well, he's misinformed, or they'll try the misogynist angle on him, or they'll try to stonewall him. Yeah. It, it could be a hundred different fucking approaches. And I, I you know, I, again. I, I disagree with some of the stuff he said. I do think there's uh, SJW shit is influencing a lot of it. But f as as far as like a business standpoint, it's a brilliant fucking statement. Hmm. It, it's just saying, hey, um, maybe not shit on the customers. You know, maybe <laughs> maybe try to have a relationship with them where it's a little more open. It's fucking yeah. brilliant business wise. I, I, you know, if they actually were to start stonewalling this guy and just slamming him in the ground, I, I'm I'm seeing that as a really that be I think that'd be what would start the the end to their uh, their their fucking reign, I would want to say, because I don't see EA putting up with that shit. If they're the way, if the way they treat their develop their dev teams, I, I just don't see them putting up with the fucking gaming journalists stonewalling them. I just don't see that happening at all. Yeah, uh, well, I, I'd love to continue this, but I, I've got to I got to cut this short. I've got about five minutes. I'm going to answer a few chat questions, and then I got okay, I got to jump for the evening. No uh, no, thanks okay. for coming on, the, the guys. I like talking about the Digger stuff. I think that's interesting. I'll look forward to the video tomorrow. Sorry, God. Definitely. Uh, yeah, thank no you. Problem. I'll uh, I'll make sure it's tweeted to everyone. All right. Awesome. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah, not a problem. Now I've got to see how the fuck does this work. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna try this. I I don't think this bans you. I think this just takes you out of the. Oh, you yeah. Left. I think it takes oh, no, you out of the call. I'm gonna I'm gonna hop out of here too. Thank you for having me, man. I'll all see right, you tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow at six. I'll see you with the guy. Looking forward to the debate. It should be good. Oh God. <laughs> all right, man. Let's see. You. All right, take it easy. Okay. All right, uh, chat. Well, I got like five minutes here. Um, yeah, about five minutes. So I'll answer a couple questions if you guys got anything. And then I'm calling it a night because I'm lazy. And the whole EA thing is blowing my fucking mind. So I, I don't really know what to say in relation to that statement by one of their people. Uh, let's see. Where's the Kotick evidence? Uh, somebody's asking. Well, no, Bobby Kotick, just, he made one statement a while ago saying that Tim Schafer couldn't you know, uh, meet his deadlines, couldn't stay in budget, and that the game he was working on the t at the time was a bad game. Uh, and he turned out to be right, because we've seen uh, Schafer have difficulties running a budget and meeting milestones and delivering the content he says he's going to deliver. He doesn't do it. Uh, shout out Operation Disrespectful Nod. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Kirk or Picard? Um, I, I used to say Picard, but uh, I, I saw some uh, statements that uh, good old Kirk's been making on Twitter, and it's some funny shit. So I think I might I might change my opinion on that. 
I tried, guys. I, I know some people are saying bring on short fat otaku. I sent out like eight invites. I'm not sure why that's not working. I really, I have no idea. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. Have I installed Gentoo? Uh, no, I haven't yet. What's your... Oh, fuck, this is going quick. Gawker getting banned from Reddit? That would be fantastic. Gawker should be banned from everywhere. Fuck Gawker. Oh, let's see. Are we losing? No. I would say we are not losing. Uh, again, uh, uh, people are saying mention disre or disrespectful nod. I'm mentioning it, so I don't know if that's coming through or not. I would hope so. What do you think of Slow Beef disliking you? I've answered that on Ask FM. I liked Red Supre when it first came out. I thought they were funny videos. Uh, if he dislikes me, whatever. Doesn't mean I'm not going to think those were funny videos. They were funny videos. Uh, let's see what else. This is going fucking quickly here. I'm, I'm trying to keep up and read something before it disappears. Actually, I'll, I'll go to Twitter for a minute and answer a few questions on there if there are any. And then pop back in a chat and call it a day. Oh, let's see. Achan's angry you aren't mentioning Operation Disrespectful Nod. I've mentioned it like three times. Everybody can look it up. Just go to 8chan and check out Operation Disrespectful Nod or look at it on Twitter if you're interested. Uh, okay, let's see. Talk about Gawker getting banned from uh, subreddit. Oh, our wow. Kotaku may no longer be submitted. That's fantastic. I don't know how long that'll stand. Um, again, because of the, some of the revelations regarding Reddit and then the behind-the-scenes stuff, but good for that uh, subdomain. Or subreddit or whatever the fuck they call it. A good decision. Fuck Kotaku. Uh, let's see. We got one from uh, Brandon Morse. Am I saying your name right? Every company should. It's a fact they cave into uh, psychotic minorities that we get into these positions. <clears throat> I'm a big believer in free market. I, I think businesses do best when they um, address their customers' needs. And there shouldn't be third parties getting in between that. It makes everybody unhappy, and it hurts business. A smart business decision uh, and position to take is making your customer happy. And that doesn't mean you have to bend over backwards for it. It just means providing the service you set out to provide. So I really do hope EA... <clears throat> sorry, my throat's going to shit. I really, really do hope EA takes a stance that Chris put out there of trying to you know, uh, rebuild the uh, uh, lines of communication and cut out these people that are poisoning the entire dialogue. And just run it like a fucking business. Again, all we want are video games. It's really simple. It's a very simple demand. Don't let these people influence how you do business. Stop listening to them. And as far as a game journalist, clean your shit up. You're, you're making yourselves look ridiculous by letting these individuals make your profession look like a joke. And you're doing no favors to any other journalists online. It's just terrible. Uh, is it cool to friend me on Steam? Uh, yeah, go ahead. But uh, I've got like, I, I'm out of slots. I don't have the money to pay Gabe <laughs> right now. But there should be a group um, listed on my Steam profile if you want to go in there. I'm, I'm going to try to run events from that because people rec are recommending it. So hopefully that turns out all right. All right. Uh, a couple more questions. I'll go back to the YouTube chat and then that's that. Do I believe in fish people? <laughs> what? I don't, know. I don't know how to respond on that. What is my favorite Pokemon? I have no idea. I, like, I, I picked up the game for the DS because people said it's a good game. I, I have no idea. I'm not, I'm not a guy that goes on VP or whatever the fuck it is. How was Moot converted to SJWism? Like I said, I don't think he bought... I, I don't think Moot is drinking the Kool-Aid. I just happen to think that the people that support his ventures, like the stuff you see at XOXO, the venture capitalists that go down there, I think he's trying to appeal to what he thinks they want. And I think they have relationships with people who really are SJWs. And so he's taking a stance to help maybe on a future project he's got. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, okay, I'm going to answer a few more and then jump. That guy with the glasses is against Gamergate. 
that would not fucking surprise me. I really would not be. I could picture uh, Mr. I've never been to New York, uh, Linkara, being very against this. That doesn't surprise me one bit. All right, last question. Let's uh, let's get a good one. <laughs> uh, and right as I say that, everybody asks really shit questions. <laughs> Thank you, chat. That's good. Uh, fuck. I'm trying to pick something different or uh, different or good. You know what? Let's let's close it on on this. What is my opinion on Phil Fish, uh, which should already be pretty evident, but. I don't like Phil Fish. I think he's a dick. I asked for his game, Fez. It didn't really appeal to me. That's not to say it's a bad game. I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. But he sure puts on entertaining meltdowns on the internet. I'll give him that. So I'm going to call it a night, guys. Thanks for coming out. Sorry again about not getting the video up, but there's a lot of content to cover, and so I pushed it back until Saturday. Hopefully the stream makes up for that a little bit, make amends as best I can. So take it easy, guys, and I will see you later.